Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Tech Guy is provided by Cashfly. C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Networks on Sunday, February 28th, 2016. This is episode 1266. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by Unity, the free personal media server. With Unity, you can access, stream, and share any media stored on your computers from your mobile devices. For more information and to download Unity for free, visit getunity.com slash techguy. That's G-E-T-Y-O-U-N-I-T-Y dot com slash techguy. And by Epson's new EcoTank printers with Epson's line of Super Tank all-in-one printers, you can print thousands of documents without running out of ink. EcoTank is loaded and ready to print when you are. Visit epson.com slash EcoTank to find out more. And by PillPack, a full-service pharmacy that combines modern technology and convenient packaging and personalized service to make your life easier. Visit PillPack.com slash Twit to save $20 on vitamins and OTCs when you transfer your prescriptions. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers and the internet and home theater and digital photography and smartphones and smart watches and all that jazz. Phone number 8888-ASK-LEO if you want to talk high tech with me. 888-827-5536. We have a chat room at IRC dot twit dot tv and a website at techguylabs.com you know what don't remember any of that just remember techguylabs.com because everything else is there techguylabs.com and there's no sign up it's free i'm not going to make you pay you don't need to pay it's free uh okay one more once more into the breach dear friends one more time we'll talk about the apple versus department of justice thing apple's filed its response to the department of justice my friend Neil patel who is a, a professional attorney as well as the founder of engadget and the verge writes on the verge that it was a very unlawyerly response this is more of a pr response than a legal response he said, normally you start with the strongest argument first, and then you, you, you know, give additional arguments. He said, Apple started with the easiest to understand argument first and uh, got to the more complicated later. Among the arguments Apple used saying, we won't help the FBI unlock this phone, among the arguments they used was a, a free speech defense saying, uh, well, you can't, you know, it's against the law to compel somebody to say something. The government can't say... Leo, you know, you have to say you like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. They can't make you say that. And since code, computer code, is a, uh, a speech, is an expression of speech, you can't make us do it. That's an interesting defense. I've come, though, more and more to the opinion the whole thing is theater. Theater from Apple, theater from the FBI, theater all around. Here's why. Well, we've learned a lot from this process and things you might want to know. For instance, it is now completely clear, and Apple has admitted it, that at any time they can g g well, look at your iCloud backup and give anything that the FBI asks for, as long as they have a warrant. Apple's probably not going to do it without a subpoena of court order, but if they have a warrant, uh, they'll hand over your, all your data that's backed up to iCloud, which for most people is everything. In fact, the reason they want to, uh, the FBI wants help with Farouk's, the terrorist, anybody you know, terrorist phone, is because it hadn't backed up in six weeks. And so they want to see if anything had happened in the six weeks since the backup, because they had everything in the backup. Apple even said, you know, <laughs> if you hadn't changed the password, it would have backed itself up and we could tell you what's there. So there, right now, there's one problem right there. Is your, is your phone uh, backing up to iCloud? Most people are. Guess what? <laughs> Apple controls that. Done. Okay. <laughs> That's one thing we've learned. So this whole thing about, oh, if we write this software, it's going to create a cancer. No. You know what it really is? Apple, uh, first of all, Apple didn't want this to be public. They told the FBI, look, let's just do this under seal. We don't need to talk about this in public because they don't really want. 
They don't want us to know that, frankly, they just hand stuff over. The FBI, uh, on the other hand, the Department of Justice wants this in the public because they want what they want. Here's what I think they want. They, they, first of all, they want a court test. And it's not over when the uh, magistrate rules. That's no. Then they're going to go all the way to the Supreme Court. And they would like a couple of things. First, they would like a precedent set that we can go to Apple anytime and ask them to write special code that will unlock the phone. By the way, it ain't just Apple. Everybody. Everybody. Because here's the dirty little secret. All computer systems already have a backdoor called the update. And if Microsoft or Android or Apple wants to push an update to your phone that unlocks it for the purposes of the FBI, they can do that. So can a bad guy, if he can get into the update process, and that's why there are vulnerabilities. There's known vulnerabilities in the Macintosh. There's an updater that a lot of software uses called Sparkle that they can use incorrectly, unencrypted, and it would allow a bad guy to update your Macintosh and when he, he you know he could put any software he wants on there. So there's already a backdoor in all in every system out there. The FBI would like to get a precedent that anytime they have a court order, they can go to any company at all, not just Apple, and say, hey, next time you update that phone, <laughs> could you just put a little bit of this, a little sugar in there for us? Just a little bit of sugar. That sugar could be a lot of things, you know. I mean, if the court says uh, yes, uh, you have the right to surveil this subject. Uh, FBI could say, well, that sugar could be turning on this microphone whenever we feel like it or a camera. So that's a, but you know what? The, the FBI's got it going on because even if the Supreme Court says, uh, 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 then the FBI can say, you see, you see the terrorists win. We can't get this stuff and go to Congress and say, we need a new Kalia. Kalia 2. This was a bill passed in the 90s that uh, gives the, the it's ca called the Communications Assistance for Law Enforcement Act, Kalia, that gives law enforcement the right to go to your telecom company and ask for their assistance. We need a new Kalia, they will say. Just to, you know, update this a little bit to include Apple and Google and Microsoft. Uh, and while you're at it, Facebook, who else? Twitter. Any, can anybody else think of any, anything else? Whatever you got. So it's a win-win, really. They, they can, the real de debate here, and this is really important for everybody to understand, because we've been misguided by both Apple and by the FBI. The real debate is not... Um, who does what to whom. <laughs> the real debate is we have now these things we call smartphones. They're really our, our main computer, our primary computer system. It's in our pocket. And oh, by the way, let's build in GPS, a camera and a microphone. Let's make it the world's best surveillance doohickey. And everybody carries them and keeps everything on there. As Tim Cook told ABC, your kid's lo per location down to the meter is on that phone. Do you want bad guys to have access to that? Well, no, of course not. So the real debate we need to have, and Congress, by the way, is the one that, it's not in the courts, it's in Congress, is do we want strong encryption, true privacy on our phones or not? And that's the debate we should be having. Do we want these phones to be private or not? Now, I'll tell you right now, you can take your iPhone and any, any bad guy listening who wants to do this can take your iphone and and make it so that law enforcement can't get into it by turning off the icloud backup that's the first thing to do get rid of that four or six digit pin code that's terrible see that's what the fbi is asking apple they're not asking for a back door they're saying can you unlock the front door because the front door is not so strong four digit pin come on there's only ten thousand possibilities all we need to do is be able to guess them without having the phone erase itself come on apple so you can say i don't want a pin i want a strong password I, and uh and, and i only want the phone to unlock when i put in a strong password like you know 16 characters numbers punctuation that can't be guessed that can't be brute forced but you know how it could be broken by pushing an update to your phone so you better turn those off too no updates 
you know, no, no communication with Apple at all because we don't trust them anymore. No iCloud backup because we know they can look at that and give that to law enforcement and put a strong password on here so the encryption, which is strong, can't be uh, brute forced. That's you can do that today with an iPhone. And that's see, this is so there's a lot more to this than the, the theater that we're getting from both sides. It's 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 a it's a puppet show, and behind the scenes, that's what's really going on. And that's the conversation we need to have. Do we want these things to be secure or not? Do we want law to protect us or not? 8888 ask Leo. Let's talk high tech. Enough of that. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Yeah, so you can, if you want to use your phone securely, I mean, I, I don't think you should use an iPhone if, you, if you're a bad guy. <laughs> so, but, I mean, but see, bad guys have plenty of recourse. They don't have to, you know, there's all sorts of things they can do. Um, including, as they did, destroy the phone before you commit the crime, and then you're fine. Uh, it's not bad guys I'm worried about so much. It's just you and me uh, and our privacy and compromise of our data by bad guys, hackers, or the federal government. Depends who you fear, fear most. And uh, if you don't want a backdoor into your phone, you have to do some some things to it. You cannot. You have to do. Yes, updates can can, can go on without your permission. Unfortunately, you have to you have to kind of disconnect. Hmm. And, so, and as this Tim Cook did bring this up, he says he's not worried about bad guys. Bad guys can find ways to make this work. But the FBI is is not looking for to what they they understand that, and it's not what they say. It's the dumb bad guys <laughs> that they want, and most most crooks are dumb. They're not smart enough. The problem is terrorists tend to be a little bit better at, at using this encryption and stuff. So probably the real answer is don't use your phone for anything important. Huh? Thank you. Or just do what most people will do. I, by the way, I turned on, I did this on this phone. It is a pain. <laughs> you have to, I have to type in this long 16 digit code every time I want to use the phone, but it's secure. I turned off iCloud backups. Actually, I think turning off iCloud backups is a good idea. I would just do that for sure. There's no reason to put all your stuff on Apple's servers. No, don't do that. That's a bad idea. I download stuff to my laptop. I don't even yeah. use the cloud. Back it, back it up to your laptop. Use strong encryption on your laptop hard drive and a good password, and that's good enough. If you put it on the cloud, all bets are off. There are very few trust no one cloud backups. And those that are, you wouldn't want to use because they're inconvenient. You can make it, you can make it trust no one by encrypting it before you back it up. So if you want, so Carbonite Lock encrypts it, but they have access to the key because otherwise there's lots of things you couldn't do like, you know, same thing with Apple. It's encrypted, but Apple has the key. Same thing with Dropbox. There's very few situations where you put something on somebody else's server and only you can have the key. Synchronization wouldn't work. Lots of things wouldn't work if you do that. Uh, I'm not sure I trust fingerprint. I don't think I trust fingerprint. Tur That's another thing you do is disable fingerprint reading. If you want, you can use it. Here's what I did on this phone. And by the way, I'm going to turn it back as soon as it shows over. <laughs> this is a pain in the butt is you don't unlock it with a fingerprint. But you can use fingerprint for Apple Pay and those things. But unlocking it should require a you know 16 to 20 character. But you're not going to do that. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I believe. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number. So apparently, this is another bit of theater. Uh, we will find out what uh, the court says about Apple's plea on the 22nd. We had thought Apple was going to have its big event. Everybody agreed on March 15th. It's now been moved to the day before the court rules. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? I don't know what the... I guess uh, get everybody feeling good about a new phone. 
maybe even Apple could use that to say, oh, and by the way, and we know they're working on this, we've got a new way to encrypt your phone that no one can break into, not us, not the Fibbies. Oh, there's one other thing I should mention. It's widely believed by people who know that the NSA could help the FBI, that they have lots of ways to get around this. The FBI probably even knows it themselves. There probably are phone calls going back and forth. Maybe there's rules about domestic versus overseas. I don't know. Or maybe the FBI really doesn't want this phone unlocked. They want Apple to. They want to set a precedent. That's what they really want. Uh, 8888 Ask Leo. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. The truth really is, if you're putting something on the internet, you should. I've always said this. You should consider it public. At least it's very hard to to keep it secret and probably you should think that way about your phone too if it's on your phone it, and somebody really wants it whether it's a hacker or the fbi they're gonna get it kim schaffer how are you kim schaffer good to see you fantastic and your shining face <laughs> welcome kim is answering the phones right now and i'm sure you've lined up some wonderful callers that will make this show stellar at 8888 ask leo no pressure though well, you're talking Apple, so we'll stick with Apple. Okay. Uh, Bert's got a locked iPad, and he needs help. <laughs> <laughs> who, should, who are you going to call? Hi, Bert. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Oops. I got that. I got that. I got to press this. Hi, Bert. Hi, Leo. Thanks for taking the call. Thanks for calling. I'm going to call the tech man. Mm hmm Okay. Uh, last night, I hadn't, uh, I hadn't updated my Apple uh, iPad 3 in months and months and months. So I figured it's time to do it, yeah. and I plugged it in, and I hit the thing, and it said verifying uh, update, and so now this morning, my iPad 3 says in the top corner, no service. I'm showing that I have connection to my Wi-Fi, and it is still verifying update. Hey. And on the bottom, it's to swipe to unlock. It will not do that. And then if I try and turn it off, it will not turn off. Hmm. Well, there's one more way to turn it off that you probably should do, which is a reset. That means uh, pressing the on-off switch and the home button and holding it. Oh, the and, home button. Which yeah, is the home button? That's the, you know, the button on the bottom where the fingerprint reader would be. So you, you On the iPad 3? Well, you don't have a fingerprint reader, but you do have a button. So, so you you know that button? There's only there's a button on the screen, the one the round one. Oh yeah, 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 yeah the home button they call that. So you press that and hold it, and you press the on off switch and hold it, and eventually what'll happen is the screen will go black and you'll see a white apple. You've reset it, and usually that's sufficient to get it out of whatever loop it's stuck in. Okay. And go on with what it needs to do because you do want to update it. Okay. And will that lose my data? No, nope, no. Nope. It's a so there's several, there are different layers of resetting it. Uh, the f the first one apparently you can't do, which is press and hold the on off switch until it says slide to turn off, and then you slide it. Yeah, the slide is there, but it will not do anything. Yeah, it's not responsive. I think the thing's crashed. So the next step is just like so the first one's like a control alt delete on Windows. Yeah. This one's like pressing the reset button, the hardware reset button. It forces it to go. Right. And you need to do that because it's stuck. I think that'll fix it though. Okay, my dilithium crystals are shot. <laughs> you need no dilithium crystals. <laughs> oh, Captain, they're cracked. Okay, so when that's off, then do I just? Turn, try and turn it right Yeah, it, actually, what you're going to do is you're going to press and hold those two buttons, the on-off switch and the home button, until you see the white apple. That actually means it turned all the way off and it's coming back on. Correct. And then it'll let it boot it up, and uh, it should be back to where it was. Okay, God willing. <laughs> yes, knock on Formica. Knock on whatever. Yeah. Knock on Formica. Yes. Or Melmac. <laughs> Melmac. <laughs> There's a memory. Only you and I are old enough to remember that. All the kids uh -huh. are saying, what did he say? Melmac? Right. <laughs> Melmac. Hey, thanks. Good. Good. Let me know if it doesn't work. Okay, Bert? Thanks, Leo. All right. Bye. You know where to reach me. E uh, Bill, I'm sorry, in Snowmass Village, Colorado. Hello, Leo. Hello, Bill. <laughs> so from sun beautiful, sunny Colorado, I've got a PC that has some problems. Uh, what a surprise. Yeah. Um, 
Somebody opened a file. It looks like it's a thing called Tesla. 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 Uh oh. Oh boy. It changed all the extensions to doc and Excel files to dot MP3. Yes, it's uh, it's encrypted them. Yes, it has. So uh, I'm rebuilding the machines, but I'm wondering. Did you get the pop up that says yep. your personal files are encrypted? Yeah, I took a picture of it on my iPad Pro yep. so that I could show my people that this is why they don't want to do this. Yeah, but. and it gives you a date that you have to respond by, and you're going to send them some money and all of that? They want all sorts of fun stuff from yeah. them. And I said, no, we're not spending any money. You're not giving them anything. Yeah. So this is a whole class of software that's really awful called ransomware. You've right. probably heard about the hospital in L.A., Oh, yeah, $17,000 reported they cut yep. them. Yep, they tried for a week, and they finally gave up and said, all right, we're going to pay the ransom. Now, law enforcement will tell you, don't pay the ransom, although uh, there's a Massachusetts uh, police department that did <laughs> because there was no way to get it back. The problem with paying the ransom, are they asking for money? Uh, they want to see how to get some Bitcoin, yeah. and some money. And the that problem with that is there's no guarantee that what you get is going to un encrypt it. In the case of the hospital, apparently it did, but they were very lucky. Uh, but, you know, on this page they sent me, aren't there ways to contact them or send this data to the feds to say, no. don't cut their little fingers off? I wish. So um, there is a server. That's where you'll get the decryption uh, key. Right. It's probably in Eastern Europe. And uh, what happens, of course, is that the feds call Interpol, and Interpol goes, and they call the hosting company, and they take the server down. But the problem with that is that's where your keys are. Right. <laughs> and when they take the server down, then it doesn't matter how much you give them. Now, the thing, the reason they use Bitcoin, and sometimes they use other anonymous payment methods, but Bitcoin's very popular. Uh, it's what the hospital paid back in, is it's anonymous. All you need is, as you see on that pop-up, a, 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 a crypto signature that's their wallet but there's no way of tying it back to them right right so they it's an anonymous way to pay it's as if you're sending them a bundle of cash too bad we can't send them a little time bomb in there. oh it's terrible and and really there's not much you can do uh and this is why you have to have a good backup i hope these guys had a good backup carbonite good so they're safe yep. so they're safe yeah carbonite works in cases like this Whew. leo laporte the tech guy Hold on a second, Bill. So I don't know if that answered your question or not, but I... Well, basically, I was just wondering if there's any way, because I've got a, a picture of their folders when those files were changed on the 25th at, at a certain time, and wondering if that can correlate back to an email that he opened at that time or time bomb. Yeah, I just did it. It's almost certainly uh, that he opened an attachment. Right, right. Um, well, you know how this happens. Either that or, I mean, there's lots of ways to get software. Well, he'd there. been in an open Wi-Fi area, and he thinks that may have been happening when he was up in Ketchum, Idaho. It's actually it. very hard to do that. I mean, it's doable. That's what I thought, yeah. But it's very hard. Much more easy and much more likely, yeah, because that's a, that's a, that is a very targeted attack. You have to be sitting right. in that cafe Click that thing. and looking for somebody. Whereas if you send out a million emails, which cost you almost nothing, chances right. are a few thousand are going to fall for it. Well, they were they do jokes and do all this stuff, and I tell them not to open jokes. You know, make sure all their Adobe stuff's updated. Make sure their job is updated. All the stuff that you preach and I push on to my people. Yeah, you know, because you, if you listen to the show, you know what to do. Yeah, yeah. So, and and it could also be a link in Facebook, or it could be there's all sorts of ways. A, a link <laughs> make that more money on Facebook with these teenagers in their houses. I know. Parents, computers. I know. Up here. I know. I know. But, uh, yeah, well, I see the mayor up here, and I hear oh, you talk neat. about Colorado a lot. And I'm heading your way in May with my drone, my Inspire. Do some oh, stuff. I can't wait. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to try to stop in and get tickets. Yeah, my son. Oh, just stop. You can always stop in. My son is in uh, Boulder. Right, right. And uh, how close is Snowmass Village? Uh, it's about four hours. Okay. I-70 was closed for a bit because of uh, a big rock slide. Wow. But, uh, that took him a little longer. Yeah, Henry's, oh, a, yeah. Henry's a snowboarder. He loves snowboarding. So, Does it? Yeah. yeah. So we've, we've got a great snowboarding. Very mountain. happy up there. Wow, he loves it there. Good. We'll come up sometime to Snowmass and, and come to... I will. The best I can do is, is ride a, uh, a toboggan or an inner tube. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing anything there. I stand up on the snow. No, I hear you. <laughs> not at my age. Hey, nice to meet you, Bill. Thank you very much. You take care. We'll okay, Mr. Mayor. Day. Okay. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Yeah, people are trying any ransomware, but if it's if if once the ransomware runs and encrypts it, you're kind of out of luck. There have been uh, in, in poorly, there have been <laughs> cases where you can uh, decrypt it because it was poorly done in the first place. Um, but in general, I wouldn't count on that. Well, I know what she's going to say. Hey, Amazon, who is Leo Laporte anyway? Hmm. I can't find the answer to the question I heard. I shouldn't add it anyway. Amazon, who's Leo Laporte? Leo Gordon Laporte is an American technology broadcaster, author, and entrepreneur. Yes, yeah, says you. Mm. Alexa, what time do the Oscars start tonight? I'm sorry, I did that. I keep. To, I'm going to learn. Amazon, what time do the Oscars start tonight? There aren't any more show times for the Oscars tonight near Petaluma. There's a movie called The Oscars? Amazon, what time do the Academy Awards start? The 88th Academy Awards ceremony will take place tonight, February 28th, starting at 5.30 p.m. PST. Okay, that's when we have to end TWIP by. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Back to the phones. Mark in Ohio. Hello, Mark. Yes, hello, Leo. Thanks hello. for taking my call. Thanks for calling. Yes, I've got a Galaxy S6, uh, and basically I do not back up to the cloud. I think I sort of read between the tea leaves there, I read the tea leaves you were saying about not really, you know, I'm not too much into the public access to my phone. So I'm trying to figure out, I was whale watching, and I happened to delete one picture off of my phone, and can I undelete that, even though it says, do you really want to delete this picture? Uh -huh. Can I get it back? Yeah, because uh, it's just a, it's, it's a file system. It's just a computer. And as you know, on almost all file systems, deletion isn't really deleting the data. It's right. just it's reallocating it, saying anybody who wants to use this space, you can use it now. It's not being used. And they change the file name to so it's okay. invisible. So in theory, it is there. The problem is how do we access it? Because the only way you can access it is via USB. Okay. And usually, unerasing utilities want lower level access than that. Um, hmm, that's a very interesting. Uh, you believe it or not, the first person ever to ask me how to do an Android unerase. I would, okay. th I would think there'd be software uh, that could do that. So, uh, yeah, apparently you can. So the key, okay. of course, is to mount your Android device on your computer. Now, normally when you plug in an Android device via USB, you know, you plug in the micro USB on the, on the Galaxy side and a regular USB plug on your computer. Uh, normally what will happen is in the settings on the phone, it'll say, oh, I right, see you're connected by a USB. What do you want me to do about that? And there's a few different modes you can have. You want the MTP mode, which is the, is the mass data mode. You want, want it to look like a hard drive. There's PTP, which means treat it like a camera. You don't want okay. that. You want, it, you want it to look like a hard drive. And once you do that, on Windows anyway, you should be able to see it on the hard drive, on the uh, desktop as a, as a mounted disk. And now it is USB, so you can run an uneraser program. And with any luck, I think it should still work uh, on that. Okay. So, uh, well, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I'll, I'll look to see because, again, since I've asked the question, I get to be the first one that's asked it. Uh, sure, I'll be I'll glad to follow up. <laughs> yeah, let me know. The, uh, yeah, let me. I should phone. work because it's uh, it's just a normal file system. I can't remember what Android uses. If It, it probably uses EXT4, which is the kind of current Linux file system. But all modern, okay. uh, unless it's a really weirdo file system, it, it doesn't erase the data. That would take too long. It just releases it for reuse and if nothing has used it now remember if something's used it all bets are off so don't do much else okay and do you mind if i ask a, a facebook question not at all go um, ahead okay all right so the question i've got is i'm again i'm not too much into I, I fully believe what you say that look the internet if it's on my phone if it's on you know it's accessible it's to the internet yeah yeah it's public, it's public. I, I firmly believe that my question is, I've always got under Facebook, although the Galaxy S6 or any of these phones comes with Facebook app, 
I don't use the Facebook I know. app. And I you can't know. delete it, can you? Because uh, no. they've made a deal with Facebook, uh, Samsung and Facebook sitting in a tree. Yeah. Can't Does delete. it make a difference that I'm accessing it like through Wi-Fi or even through my data? But I only go to it via the Internet. I do not use the app whatsoever. Does that make any difference whatsoever? No, because it's all on Facebook servers. Okay. All and right. Facebook has every... <laughs> so... If 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 it were me, and I were trying to figure out what what you know what uh, you know uh, Mark is up to over there in Ohio, I just go to Facebook right. and and land them with a court order and say, "Can I have that stuff, please?" And okay. they have all your transactions, everything you've done, everything that's on your page. Okay. Now, if you're worried yeah, about somebody snarfing your data, now this is possible. You're at a Wi-Fi access point, and uh, you're on Facebook. Uh, the good news is Facebook because of known problems in the past, now uses HTTPS, secure browsing. So it's scrambled. So nobody sitting in a Wi-Fi uh, you know, hotspot snooping on you can see it. It's just garbage data. There are other issues that can come up. You know what? I hate to... I don't... I. The bad news is we're all pretty hackable. Yeah. The good news is nobody's really interested in us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. The uh, I, I used an example yesterday. There's a great piece, which I highly recommend. A guy named Kevin Roos, R-R-R-O-O-S-E, did a great uh, piece for Fusion at Fusion.net. He asked two professional hackers to hack him. Now, these were guys, white hat hackers, who do this for a living for companies to test their security. The, you know, And it's called penetration or pen testing. So he said, hack me. And he, even though knew he knew it was coming... He was a sophisticated user. He took every precaution. They owned this guy. <laughs> they owned this guy. It was, it was, he, the, he leads off the story. He says, I was sitting at my computer one night and it told me, you look bored. And imagine how you would jump out of your chair if your computer just said, you look bored. <laughs> <laughs> that was the hacker. He was actually watching him. And he told the computer's synthesized voice to say, you you look bored, scary. So really, if, if and but, but the bottom line, this is, Kevin mentions this in the article, he, he, the bottom line is, he, he talked to another uh, professional hacker who said, look, you're walking down the street and a martial artist, a guy, a black belt in 20 different forms of karate attacks you, not much you could do about it. But you're, but you don't, you still walk down the street. You know why? Because it's very unlikely that a martial artist is going to go after you. Don't, don't annoy them. And same thing with hackers. Unless you're a celebrity, a government agent, or the IRS, nobody's targeting us. That's a, that's a pathetic form of security. But that's the best we got. If they really wanted you, they could get you. You are. It's great. I listen to you all the time when I'm driving back and forth. And uh, no, I, I truly appreciate it. I enjoy your show. And thank you very much for the information. I'm glad yeah. you called. Yeah. I am always reluctant to talk too much about this because I don't want you to feel paranoid. I don't want people to, to go off the Internet and stop using technology. Uh, and and frankly, uh, even though I did as an exercise set my iPhone to a much more secure mode, it's so inconvenient. I'm going to set it right back after the show. It's just a pain in the butt. We just kind of have to live with it um, and hope nobody targets us. You did see, didn't you, that the IRS admitted <laughs> that far more of our records were hacked than they thought. Last year, <laughs> last year, the IRS told us, oh, yeah, we got hacked. And, you know, um, a few more than 100,000 people's records were, you know, their entire tax return was uh, leaked. That's social address everything basically you got somebody's tax return you own them yeah a little more than a hundred thousand now they've come back oops they've revised it twice now they've come back and said you know it actually was more like seven hundred thousand people and as we know i mean it's happened before that number probably keep going up once somebody gets your social and your address and your income you're pretty you're you're dead you're dead. Um, dates of birth, place of birth. You know, it's not. It's forget it. This is a, some of the most private stuff of all. And you're doing everything right. Apparently, the IRS isn't. 
just hope that nobody cares about you. Oh, by the way, if you're one of the, you're going to get an email from the IRS if if you're one of those seven hundred thousand. And guess what? You get a free, free Equifax identity theft protection for a year. All right. <laughs> Thank you, IRS. Thank you. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. And you can't not be a customer of the IRS. I'm never shopping there again. Time for me to do a little uh, commercial, how about, for a great product that uh, I just learned about not so long ago. In fact, it was on iOS today, I think, called Unity. Do you know about Unity? It's free. So th there's, there's no come on here. They're not trying to sell you something. But it's really a great media server for... Um, your iOS device for uh, your Macintosh. If you go to Get Unity, and I should spell it for you because it's maybe not obvious. Y O U N I T Y. So it's G E T Y O U N I T Y. dot com slash tech guy. Okay, and you can download it for free. You put it on your Mac. And it's really cool because it will uh, it will immediately uh, see all the media on your Mac. I've did this and it was wonderful, and and that's audio, that's video, and you can share it not just with yourself, but you share it over the internet with uh, with your friends too. And this is completely free. So you put the installer on your PC, it discovers all the media and files. You put the app on your tablet or your phone. And you can stream them directly to your phone over the internet. So if you've been trying to figure out, oh, how do I get these movies and things onto my phone, this is the easiest way to do it, Unity. It's a free, easy-to-install personal media server that connects your devices so you can access all your content on the go. No syncing, no uploading. Yes, it does photos as well. Configuration, nothing. It just works. You could automatically merge iTunes accounts and libraries. You can access all your Lightroom or Apple photo libraries and photo albums. You could post photos stored on your computer directly to Instagram from your phone. You can stream and share your GoPro videos. You can even use AirPlay. But now this is cool to stream music or video to your TV. Perfect. This would be good. Good one for uh, iOS. That's how I learned about it. Actually, was using it with the uh, iPad and my Apple TV. Unity, it's free, period. G-E-T-Y-O-U-N-I-T-Y dot com slash tech guy to download it. And we thank them so much for supporting the Tech Guy podcast. They're just trying to get the word out. We're here. Use us. We're free. Getunity.com slash tech guy. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Well, uh, the chat room's come up with uh, some good solutions for our caller who wanted to unerase an erased photo on his Android device. Turns out there are some Android apps that you can actually put on your device. Now, I caution you about that because, as you remember, the process of erasing a file on any operating system is merely to free that space for use by others. If you've erased a file and then you download a restore utility, you might be downloading the restore utility right smack dab on top of that photo, in which case it's, not, it's no longer recoverable. So the best thing to do would be to use a PC, connect the Android phone to that, and, and, and not do anything that would put data on your Android device if possible. You know, shut it down, uh, put it in airplane mode and all that, because you don't want it to save anything. But if you haven't erased anything yet, and you think you might... <laughs> There are some good utilities uh, that will do that. So um, we'll put this in the show notes at techguylabs.com, but there's Restore Image and Digger. Uh, but again, the problem is, you know, it's risky to install these, Disk Digger, I should say. Both of these are in the Play Store because you could be, a, you could be overwriting your uh, photo. Barry in Northridge, California, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hello, Barry. Hello, Leo. Um, have a uh, Surface Pro 4. Your recommendation. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. My apologies. You did. You did get the. Did you get the firmware update though? 
I got the firmware update. That fixed uh, a lot of those problems. Uh, at this point, I feel like the Surface Pro 4 and the Surface Book, which I have, are, are, are very nice computers. Um, what I'm having difficulty with is uh, using, it using a lot of battery very, very quickly. Oh, that's not so I'm good. Getting, I'm, I'm getting four to five hours. Now, mm. most recently, I no I've noted something that was running and eating up battery tremendously. Uh -huh. It was in Windows 10, and it was um, something and Skype, and I don't have Skype installed. Mm. Uh, so I turned that off, and it seems to be getting almost 20% better oh, battery. Oh, that is awesome. That turned off. <laughs> so Microsoft, and I, I wish they didn't do this, but they put a bunch of stubs, you probably noticed them, on the, on the Surface software for things like Skype. It's not Skype, it's download Skype. And there's one called Skype Video. And there's one for Candy Crush Soda. Um, these are just little programs that will help you download them. I'm wondering if that's what was there. And why no, is it connecting no. the mic? Why is it going online? Why is it using a battery? I don't know. Uh, it's it, it was called Messaging and Skype. It's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. See, and, yeah. And, and apparently Skype is not installed on the machine. Doesn't need to. Uh, yeah. it, 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 seems, it seems to be just using processor time, processor time. Uh, I, was at, I was at almost 40, uh, almost uh, 30, 30 some odd percent of my processor usage in the, in the 24 hours. That's terrible. Was terrible. This uh, messaging and Skype. At least you can see the, what's using the battery and then go track it down. Yeah, this, uh, so Microsoft has decided, I, this was a dumb move also. Microsoft has an infinite capacity for dumb moves. In this case, they killed MSN messaging and then replaced it with Skype messaging. And they put it on by default because they want you to use messaging, although they don't really let anybody know. <laughs> and so there's this thing, Skype host, running in the background that you didn't, you didn't ask for, you didn't install, and you're not using. But it's using a battery. Well, I'm glad you found uh, it. it what, what, was the, what was the file you deleted? Was it Skype host? No, it was not a file that I deleted. I went into all settings. Ah. Uh, then I went into system. Then I went into battery saver. Got it. Then I went into battery use. And you said don't use. Under, uh, under battery use, yeah. I said don't use. Yeah. That's a, that, by the way, wonderful new feature. Uh, that I highly recommend. Android's doing this, and uh, Apple's doing this now, too, uh, on the iOS side. Uh, and it's very useful, because you, you can immediately see, well, what's using the battery? I don't want that. I don't use that. Have you seen any bad side effects? No, I have seen none whatsoever. And the thing is, I don't have downloaded the Skype, app, uh, the Skype uh, program that I can download. Uh, I don't know whether that would reactivate that. Uh what I was told is that in Windows 10 in the November update that they built in the messaging and something for Skype, Skype video, and something else. Yeah, yeah is that uh, annoying? It <laughs> is beyond annoying. And the process, the process that was running was Windows Skype 32. Wow. And at times that would get up as high as 100% as uh, you know, CPU usage, and then it was also uh, running off of the SSD. Look at that. I see Skype uh, on my Windows 10. Now, I have Skype installed, but it's used 10% of my battery life. And mm -hmm. there it is, messaging plus Skype. I see the one. That's the one you don't want to use. That's the one that was, that was, that was just chew chewing up the processor. So I was wondering if there was any other suggestions you might have for getting better battery life. Uh, well, uh, the number one suggestion is absolutely turning, you know, getting that firmware update for Surface 4 and Surface Book because that did make a huge difference in battery savings. We have Skylake processors in these newest Surface devices, and Intel's Skylake apparently, according to Microsoft, power management with Skylake is, quote, a tough computer science problem, end quote. But maybe they hired some computer science graduates. I don't know because they they finally fixed it about a week ago. And that made a huge difference for me. It actually sleeps now. It doesn't stay on. I don't hear the fan coming on at random times. Uh, I don't have a lot of other uh, tips. You know, it's funny. We pay so much attention to it on our mobiles, but less so on our laptops. Although we ought to. I guess, you know, five hours, a lot of people go, well, that's better than I used to get. I don't know what I get on my, uh, 
on my Surface Book. It says it's going to get 10 hours with a full charge, but I haven't ever really kind of sat down and timed it. it the, the Surface okay. Book has a little more battery than the Surface Pro because the keyboard has a battery in it as well. Right, right. I know that. Yeah. I think you're doing the right thing, which is going to those settings, those battery, you know, and looking at battery use, and then you can you can control it. You know, there's a there's a switch, as you know, but others should look that you can turn off. Allow this app to run in the background. Allow this app to run in the background, even when battery saver is on. You turn those both to off. Ultimately, you could go into the services and look at services. This is a little bit more geeky, um, but if you uh, if you do Windows X. And, uh, and you go to computer management, you can get a list of all the services that are running. This has been present for a long time uh, in Windows. And you can see if you want all of those services. Some of those may be using Juice. For instance, look at this. I have an ActiveX installer service running. <laughs> Do I want that? No. So you could disable those or set them to manually enable, something like that. There's, so those are some things you can do to tweak it. Nobody, I, to my knowledge, I haven't seen any battery-saving guides for Windows 10, I think that'd be a great thing to do. Um, okay, well, thank you very much. Hey, I thank you for the question, and I thank you for the tip, more importantly. Chat room is pointing to, and we'll put this in the show notes, Slow-Mo says, here's a... Uh, oh, this is good. This is about the uh, update. This connected standby doesn't turn off Marvell Wi-Fi chip when sleeping. Battery drains. And there's another problem. You know, this computer stuff is hard. It's a hard computer science problem. And someday somebody's going to come along and understand it. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number. Let's see, uh, next on the line, we're going to talk to Mike in Kentucky. He wants to put Windows on his Mac. <gasps> Sacrilege, but I'll help you do it when we come back. Stay right here. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smartwatches, all that jazz. 8888-ASK Leo. Chris Marquardt, our photo guy, coming up in about half an hour to talk digital photography. I have a new uh, sidekick on the show. Have you met uh, Amazon's Echo? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I haven't yet, you know, well, I'll, let me let me see if, if she knows She's anything about computers. I'm responsive today. Hey, Amazon, how do I recover an erased file on Android? Oh, she, she's not even listening now. Hey, Amazon, how do I recover an erased file on Android? Maybe she knows. Sorry, I can't find the answer to the question no, I heard. No, of course you can't because you don't know anything. Sundays must be her off day. Amazon, what sound does a cow make? I'm sorry. I'm not very good at impressions. Oh, okay. Well, that's fair enough. <laughs> 8888 Ask Leo. I thought it would be a good idea to get an echo for the studio, but now I'm, now I'm wondering. Maybe she won't be much help. Uh, I am. I'm getting some new stuff tomorrow, though. I just got a notice from uh, T-Mobile. Last week, uh, Galaxy uh, Samsung announced the Galaxy S7 and the S7 Edge. New phones, new Android phones that look pretty amazing there are others uh hp announced a new windows phone well now we're talking the elite x uh, that's six inches is giant but it also can be docked and uh, turn into a windows pc which is that's kind of neat lg announced its g5 so the the first though to be available was this uh, samsung galaxy s7 they said you can go to stores uh, as of this weekend you can go to stores and see it the pre-orders went up, uh, I think, on Thursday. So I, I thought, well, I'll pre-order it. Now, unfortunately, it's you have to buy it from a carrier. I, I like to get my phones unlocked. But okay, I have a T-Mobile account. So I ordered it, and they said it's coming tomorrow. Wow. This is this is going to be a heck of a phone. Four gigs of RAM. That's always good with Android. You want, you want a lot of memory. Um, and the new, Sam's, uh, new Qualcomm 820 Snapdragon processor, which... People are raving about it. It seemed to be it was the it was the star of Mobile World Congress this past week. Lots of phones using the 820, and that's good because the 810, its predecessor, didn't work so well. It overheated. A lot of the companies had to slow it down to keep it from getting too hot. 
It wasn't a very it wasn't a very good experience. Uh, in fact, so much so that Samsung didn't even use it in the Galaxy S6. They used their own homemade Exynos processor. But they're going back to Qualcomm this year in the United States, and I'll be getting one of those. Uh, only 32 gigs of storage, though. But at least they have an SD card available. So by next week, I should have a review for you. I'll have had, an, had it for enough time to give you a, a sense. I'm excited about it. Isn't this the way, though, it is with smartphones? On paper, they all look so great. Oh, man, a quad HD, five and a half inch screen. Oh, man, that camera. They, they lowered the megapixels. It's only tw it's what, 12 now, but... They're big dots, and they can do phase focusing, and they got an f1.7 lens. Oh man, that look on paper, everything looks great. And I'm still in that honeymoon phase where I, I can't wait. This is going to be a great phone. And then you know, you get it, and it's like uh, disappointment. Reality sets in. No phone is perfect, unfortunately. <sighs> we'll see. I'll give you a review uh, next week. Meanwhile. Mike in Kentucky is very patiently hanging on. Thank you, Mike, for sitting through the news. Welcome. Well, thank you, Leo. I've been following you since the 90s, and I'm Old Salem on the chat room. Old Salem, it's great to talk to you. Well, I've been, like I said, I've been a fan of yours for years, and basically you taught me uh, how to use a PC back when you were on TV. Wow. So back I appreciate with, that. Wow, that's great. The reason I'm calling is I have a Mac OS 27-inch. Uh, uh, it's a new one. And um, I've got Windows 10, and I'm using Boot... Uh, 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 boot Camp. Boot Camp, I'm boot camp. sorry. Boot Camp, and I got the, both current systems on it. I need to put an external drive in uh, on it. I got a four terabyte drive, and I want to know which... What do you recommend for me to format that external drive? So oh, I'm not that's a good question. Software. I'm using the Paragon software that allows you to read and write uh, one for the Mac side and one for the Windows side. That Paragon software. Well, you already is, bought that. That's good software. You know, Here's yeah, the problem. You know, Macintosh has its own. These are we're talking about file systems, uh -huh. and there are many file systems in the world. Macintosh has one its own, the hierarchical file system or HFS. The current mm -hmm. HFS plus. Yeah. is the default on Macintosh. But Macs, because they lived for so long in a PC world, they can read the PC file format FAT and FAT32. FAT they don't like NTFS. That's why you have that Paragon software. You can read it, but you can't write it without the additional driver. And the Paragon driver does a very good job of that, right? Uh, yes, I, yeah. bought, I bought their product for the Windows side and bought it for the right. Mac side. And yeah, because Windows doesn't understand HFS, the Mac format, so you need the software on Windows side to read the Mac file. Yes. So uh, it's a good question. I, I mean, are you asking which is technically the best? Well, I was wondering what would be the most trouble-free. Should I format the external 4 terabyte Windows or should I format it Mac? You know, uh, because I work with other uh, operating systems all the time, I generally, unless I know I'm only going to use that disk with a Mac, mm -hmm. I generally format things FAT, FAT32. Mm -hmm. um, it's not the best file system in the world. It's yeah. not as good as the current Windows choice, NTFS. Uh, and it's probably not as good as HFS Plus either, but it gets the job done. And for data storage, it, you know, it does limit you, I think, to four, is it four, four gig files? Four gig, yeah. yeah. Huh? But, I mean, I, if you get files bigger than four gigs, you got other problems. So I'm not sure. I don't think that's a real hazard. Well, with the Paragon software, would uh, that would... Uh would it cause a problem by formatted Windows, so or the NTFS uh, Windows side, so it just, you know, can uh, Yeah, because you've got the Paragon, Paragon software, I, I don't like uh, having to have a driver. I do, too. I, I, yeah, but but yeah, it's okay. You bought it. Yeah, 19 bucks each. Yeah, I bought it, too, for the uh, Windows side, so I could read uh, HFS. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, of course, there's also XFAT, E-X-F-A-T, extended Yeah. Which is, allows a lot bigger file. Yeah. yeah. Removes a four gig. It came out with, with the Vista, or no, XP, I guess. Uh, and it's, by the way, it's optimized for flash drives. Mm -hmm. So um, that's a nice thing. It doesn't have all of the things, all of doesn't do all the things NTFS does. But it, but it can, as you say, go bigger than four gigabytes per file. Um Mac Mac does Mac does support XFAT. I guess probably if I were the problem is not everything else supports XFAT. 
So, for instance, it, uh, I don't format. Um, Maybe I should just partition that four terabyte, uh, two terabyte for one, two terabyte for the other. No, I wouldn't do that. You know what? Do XFAT because it's only going to be a computer. It's only going to be on a Macs and PCs. That's the right. best common file system. X, just the XFAT. XFAT. The limitation. The four and it, it doesn't have the four gig limitation. That's the nice thing about XFAT. XFAT. Okay. I'll yeah. do Use EXFAT. All right. Um, and then, uh, it, as far as I know, I don't know. I I don't know what the maximum file size is. It's so big you don't care. Yeah. And uh, fine. And. Uh, it's optimized for flash USB drives. I use it on USB drives a lot, unless I'm going to connect them to a phone, because there are uh, Android won't read XFAT. There's so it's a it's a it's, yeah. it's kind of a messy world we live it in. It is, it is, but it always has been. So I would say XFAT is going to be the most modern. It's my goodness, it's only ten years old. Why? It's a young whippersnapper. That sounds good to me. That's what I'll do. Yeah, that's, I guess that would be my best choice. Uh, it's compatible with Mac. It's compatible with Windows. It has no limit, no effective limit on file size. It does journaling, which is actually really good. That speeds up writes considerably and makes it more reliable should the computer crash. I think EXFAT is probably the best choice. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number. And you can comment there. Call me or on the website, techguylabs.com. What's your favorite file system? More of your calls right after this. If only I had a printer that didn't run out of ink, then, then my life would be better. Fortunately, I do. It's the Epson EcoTank printer, and it comes with two years of ink in the box. Say goodbye to ink cartridges. Say hello to affordable, refillable bottles or packs if you get the you know the office one you can find out more at epson.com slash ecotank see the whole range of epson eco tank printers all of them have one great feature they come with around two years of ink in the box like this the et4550 it's an all-in-one printer does everything you want it's wireless and comes with 11,000 black pages worth of ink in the box or 8,500 color pages. That's about 50 cartridge sets. And then when you run out of ink, don't worry. You'll save 80% with low-cost replacement bottles. Sure, Epson, sure, Epson could, uh, could do it differently. But they, I think they really care about you. I think they really do. And I love this printer. Actually, it's the same as the Workforce Pro that I have in my office. Um, 40 million dots per second of ink. It comes from their industrial engine that is so amazing. Super crisp black and white text. Vivid colors, automatic two-sided printing. It's a lot of the things ink uh, jet printers can do that lasers don't, like no warm-up time, uh, you know, really fast. Three about It's about three seconds a page. It goes zh, 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 so fast, so good looking. And then I can print to it wirelessly, not only on my Wi-Fi network, but from my phone, my tablet. I can print from here using Google Cloud Print to my printer at home. And then Lisa, she had to do me one better. She said, well, I'm going to get the EcoTank printer. So not only do I get all those features, but I also don't have to buy ink for two years. Man. Man. Epson.com slash EcoTank. You can learn more. It will literally transform the way you think about printing in your home, in your office, in your work group. For the best combination of ease and value, turn to the new Epson EcoTank printers. E P S O N dot com slash EcoTank. I gotta I gotta applaud Epson for really doing the right thing for their consumers, their customers. Epson.com slash EcoTank. Epson exceed your vision. What is what is all blues music now sound like a Cialis ad? Am I wrong? You're Leo Laporte. Right. <laughs> They've ruined blues for me. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the phone number. Dale is in Santa Monica, California. Hi, Dale. Hi. So, uh, Leo, I've got a question for you. I bought the very last Mac Pro Tower <laughs> in, in 2014. <laughs> and the reason I did... Did you know it was the last one? Well, no, it was like it was for, left over from inventory. This was after oh, the. Oh, so you did? You knew about the garbage can Mac? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And the reason I bought the old one is I really, really liked the design. Yeah, you were a wise man because it was a much better Mac Pro than they came up with subsequently. 
Yeah, so you've got extra bays where you can yep. shove in hard drives for backup. Yeah, it's expandable. I, you can put a new video card in. You can do all sorts exactly. of stuff. And so my problem is, next time I upgrade, I'm either going to have to go to an iMac or the new Mac Pro. And what I want is a box with one cable between it and the computer yeah. where I can put in hard drives. Ah. And it would be it'd be great if I could even put in an optical drive because I use the, uh, the DVD drive frequently and CD, you know, the whole thing. So there are lots of things that will do this. And this is thanks to Thunderbolt. Right. Thunderbolt is fast. It's as fast as the system bus. Actually, you know, if you wait a little bit uh, and the new Thunderbolt 3 will be even faster. Um, but, right, you know, so I had the beautiful black cylinder mac pro and it never was it never i traded it once uh because it was crashing and it never did work fully right not as well as my old cheese we call them the cheese grater mac pro the one you have right it looks yeah. like a cheese grater uh, yeah. uh but it's a beautiful case it's a really elegant case yeah it is um when i so after i got tired of unreliably using this mac pro i ended up getting a 5k iMac and i've been very happy with it in either case, they have Thunderbolt, which means you can buy a Thunderbolt enclosure and put anything you want in it. Thunderbolt allows you to daisy chain multiple drives, multiple units. I can't remember the maximum, something like 64. Uh, it's got tons of throughput. Um, so what you want to do with an external enclosure and an optical drive, that's totally doable. Great. Yeah. Uh, I would go to uh, Otherworld Computing. They are the ones that sell Mac stuff. They're very mac set. Right. Can, can you believe I've been going there on your recommendation? When I go to the Apple store in Santa Monica, I have to tell the, the people in there about it. Yeah. Other world computing. Yeah. Isn't that funny? You, well, they yeah. may know, but they don't want to talk. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Uh, I have a Drobo Mini, which is a great, it has Thunderbolt and is a great little external drive. With It's a four drive bay. It uses the um, little half height drives you could even use ssds if you want to be very fast and that's a nice choice for an external but it's pricey anything's yeah. gonna be pricey you put five drives in something it's gonna be pricey right right but i okay. i think it's a great uh great way to do it um uh because you can boot from those drives you can use it for massive storage um and you know you have to do that with a mac pro because because it's not expandable it's right very frustrating right. very yeah, frustrating yeah yeah the only problem i have with the mac this Mac Pro Tower is it weighs a ton. Well, yes, and I've had to take it. I've had to take it in a couple of times. Yeah, and you're not going to get parts for it soon. You know, if you wanted a, yeah. a video card, you're not going to be able to get the latest, greatest video card. Under yeah. uh, 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 other world computing sells the Thunder Thunder Bay Four RAID Five Edition Four Bay Professional Grade Enclosure. For, that's 500 bucks unpopulated with no drives in it. That's not a bad price. That's Thunderbolt. There's a lot of choices here. Okay. Uh, for Thunderbolt enclosures and now the optical is an interesting uh, question. Th that's USB, I think. So yeah, yeah, I think there's got to be a way to to have USB in a, one of these enclosures. Oh man, do they have big enclosures? Look at all these enclosures. <laughs> Holy cow! Uh, yeah, you have lots of choices uh, using Thunderbolt. Okay. Yep. Hey, listen, I've got two products I want to recommend to you. Yes, sir. Have you ever played Borderlands Two? Love it. Oh, it's great. Love the it. Other one is, that's the a other that's one? a mobile game, uh, Android and iOS, right? I think so. Well, I I do it on the 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 Mac and it's just fine. It runs, you know. Oh, yeah, it's on Steam as well, yeah. Yeah. The other thing is uh Fujifilm XT1. You ought to just at least look at that even though you're in love with your Sony. <laughs> it's a beautiful camera. I'm very well aware of it. Uh it's a gorgeous camera. Uh you know, I love that they're moving back to this it, they're really nostalgic-looking cameras, like the kind of film cameras we, we used to carry. Yeah, and they're very simple. And the Fujifilm is a micro four-thirds, right? Or no, it's XPS. It's a, it's a APS, APS-C uh, sensor. Yeah. Does it have interchangeable lenses, or is it a fixed yeah. lens? Yeah. I will I look at it. I get some nice lenses. I, the thing that I like about it really is that you can make a lot of adjustments from the outside of the camera. You don't have to dig through menus. Yeah, that's what I like too about these. These that all of these are kind of like this. So they they use knobs instead of digital interface because because photographers want to keep their ha hands on the camera and their eyes through the viewfinder and twiddle the knobs. Right. Right. And uh, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think there's some. Be it's a wonderful time to be a photographer. I'll ask uh, Chris Marquardt what he thinks of it. He's coming up okay, in just great. a few minutes. Thanks. Yeah.
Hey, thanks for the call. I appreciate it. I, I remember uh, talking uh, to one of my uh, favorite photographers, Vincent LaForet. He's done a new book called Air, which is aerial photos that are just mind-bogglingly beautiful. Do you, if you go to a, do you have a bookstore anywhere near you? <laughs> no, nobody does. <laughs> uh, so there's nowhere you can go look at this, but it's a gorgeous book. But Vincent, who's been a pro for a long time, now directs commercials and does video as well, he said something very interesting. He said, now that everybody is a photographer... Uh, even with your smartphone now, you have a very capable camera in your pocket. It's harder and harder to him for him to make a unique image. He's got to look. He's got to. He's got to really push himself. And he says that's why I took to the air. He says <laughs> it takes a lot of money to get a helicopter up there and fly around taking aerial pictures. Most people can't do that. He was looking for a unique image that he could make that not every everybody could do with their with their camera phone. In so in in one way it's a marvelous time for photography. All of us get a chance to take pictures with great equipment, even just our camera phones, great equipment. On the other hand, if you're a pro, it's gotten harder to stand above the crowd. You have to go the extra mile. 8888 uh, Ask Leo, speaking of uh, digital photography, our, uh, our photo buff, our professional photographer and advisor, Chris Marquardt, I think is here. I haven't seen him in the chat room yet. I, oh, yes, I see him. I'm looking now at his shining face. He's ready to go. We're going to do, I think, part four of uh, his uh, uh, continuing saga of how to take better pictures of people. I love this. I love this. So we'll do that in just a little bit. Don't forget the website is techguylabs.com. And that's where you'll find it's free. No sign up. Just go. Links to everything we talk about. Actually, after the show, there's audio and video, so you can go back. If you missed a show, you can go back and see it on YouTube. There's a YouTube link there. and Actually, it plays back on the page. Um, and you can add your comments, which I appreciate. If you've got a, an idea, if you heard a call and said, I, you know what, I know what you can do, go there and do that in the comments. I really uh, That really adds to the value of it. It's easy to remember. It's the only thing you need to remember, techguylabs.com. Uh, Chris Marquardt, photo guy, coming up in just a bit. We're going to do a little photography and answer more of your questions. Leo Laporte here. I am the tech guy. My Leica Q what, comes what, tomorrow. What, what did you buy? <laughs> my Leica Q comes tomorrow. It wasn't me. Yeah. It no, this me. one's it's not, not my you. Fault. It's not my fault. It's not my fault. You know fault. what? I read that piece that everybody was passing <clears throat> around uh, by, was it Bruce Todd? What was his name? I can't remember. Possible. Oh, my gosh. It just made me salivate. <laughs> oh, I am. I'm I waiting. Gotta, I'm I am. waiting for the Canon Canon 5D Mark IV. That's supposed to come out soon. Yeah, it's a rumor. Michael, I don't know, Michael but... O'Donnell was telling me any day now. Yeah. Oh, they oh, want to oh, come Leo, out before um, Photokina or something like that. Important calendar information. Yes. I am going to be gone for three Sundays in a row. How dare you? Well, I'm going to be in Tuscany and then I'll be oh. in uh, Siberia. Tuscany and Siberia. I can't think of more opposite. Uh, yeah, Tuscany is an actual vacation, which I haven't done in a while. Nice. That's where I. That's where I would like to retire is Tuscany. And then. Yeah. Lake Baikal. Two. Oh, weeks. how fun! So this is what uh, this is what got me. It's Craig Maud. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh, yeah. yeah. This is what got me. I. You know that picture alone. But then he writes this basically this ode to a Leica Q. Uh, and it's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. I have to have this camera. Oh, uh, my God. So what he did, I'm going to do, which is taped over the red dot. You know, he completely uh, uh, anonymized it, which I think is very smart. Well, it'll it'll at least not attract as much attention. You might actually be able to get a special edition without the dot. No, I want the dot. I just want to have tape <clears> on it when I... <laughs> when I'm out in public, that would be your second like I know. Yeah, I'm, That's I'm kind of, and, and, uh, yeah, I'm kind of out of control. Still, only one like a lens so far. Well, this will be my second. Well, that, that one comes with a lens. Yeah, it comes with a tw f one seven twenty eight. Yep, it's a street shooter. Yeah. I need another like to take pictures of the Leica though. So that's. Oh yeah, oh, yeah of course, that's why I got of it. course, Leica Inception. <laughs> oh man new toys 
Yeah, Burke, actually, I'm looking for some good black tape. I don't, I don't know if is gaffer's tape. Maybe gaffer's tape would be enough. I don't want to put duct tape on it. That's too sticky. And electrical tape, maybe not. I think maybe gaffer's tape will work. I'm sure we have some gaffer's tape here. There's there's some really high quality gaffer tape that you can uh, get off. It's expensive. Later. Gaffer's tape is really expensive. Well, you, do you want do you want to put something? You stick something on your Leica, and then like half a year later, take it off, and you got all the residue of the. Well, that's the thing. I don't, there. and that's why gaffer's tape because it comes off. Yeah. Right. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Here he is, the photo guy, Chris Marquardt. We're going to conclude our <laughs> four-part story on how to take better people. Pictures. It's the third part, but yep. Third, do fourth, this. whatever. Um, but this is the last one, or do we want to do not another one next week? I thought no, you were I going think, to I Siberia. Think, well, I will go to Tuscany and then to Siberia. And actually, that means I won't be here for three weeks in a row, and I apologize for that. <sighs> but let, let's finish it up. I We talked about two weeks ago, we talked about how to make people look good. Yeah. Then last week we talked about how to light portraits. You rem remember I was raving about the window light and how you can use the light from a, from a window, uh, maybe with a bit of curtain in front of it to get like a very smooth and soft light from mm -hmm, uh, different mm -hmm, directions. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, in, in order to be able to take these pictures, you want to get people in front of the camera first. And you want them to be kind of, you know, relaxed, not, not tense, not all shy uh, because you're taking pictures of them. So... I typically, I classify people into three different categories. First of all, they're the people around you, your friends, your, I don't know, coworkers, your family. And those are the ones that, that kind of know you most, most of the time. And um, there are a few ways to kind of get them at ease. And of course, the most important one, first and foremost, is shoot lots. Take a lot of pictures, which by the way, it's easier today than uh, than it used to be. Um, people are getting more and more used to, to their picture being taken. At least that's what I find. Um, of course, it helps always to have your camera with you for that. And share those pictures with them. It's a very essential way to build trust, to make them kind of, yeah, understand that you don't mean them any harm. If they see the picture, well, you I'm know, not, you know people, are, hey, people are sensitive now. I'm not spying on you. With a camera in your hand, you are in a kind of a power position. Yeah. You know, you you have this thing, and they don't really know what you're doing there. And then once you show them the pictures, and once you're always around of them, that builds trust, or it builds indifference. Maybe they just don't care anymore yeah. that you take their picture, which is also good. You know, it also I prefer helps. indifference because I don't want them posing for me. Well, that's that's a good thing in most of the cases where people just oh he's taking no, yeah let, just ignore me pretend I'm yeah, not here let, just yeah. to, just ignore that person with a camera. Of course, always keep your feelers up. Always make sure you kind of understand and mm -hmm. be sensitive to other people not liking the camera around them. But uh, most people around me now just yeah they just shrug. Oh, that's okay. Chris. He's just Go doing ahead, his do, thing. Yeah. yeah. My kids thing. got and, so tired of me taking pictures. They actually refused. They just said no. No, no pictures. By, sh by sharing the pictures with them, by showing them, maybe not, maybe well, sometimes straight away on the display. Sometimes maybe after you put a bit of work in them, yeah. after you make the colors. They always loved the pictures afterwards. And then they, they see them and they will over time learn that, oh, <laughs> maybe it's not a bad idea to let yeah. him take my pictures. Yeah, well, now because, they say that. Yeah. <laughs> it's too late now. Okay, so that's that's the people around you. That's the people you see often. But of course, you know, you're somewhere where you haven't been before or where you don't know people, strangers. Mm -hmm. um, lots of different ways to to take pictures of strangers. Well, first of all, depends on where you are. You might get away with a candid photo. Um, legally, it might be... And then run, different, right? ...different parts of the world. Well, then run, <laughs> run very fast. <laughs> no, so the two, two things that I do all the time, <clears throat> I try to communicate in some way, mm -hmm. be it just a visual kind of thing, like pointing at the camera and just over a distance kind of signaling them that you want to take that picture or just ask. I mean, sometimes it's as simple as that. And that doesn't mean it will be a posed picture, but just imagine you're on a, on a, I don't know, a farmer's market and you there's someone behind behind a counter somewhere selling fruit and you ask them, hey, wow, look at the beautiful pumpkins you're selling here. Um, can I take a picture of you? And that person will start posing for you. Um, all you have to say is, no, no, th uh, 
just keep doing what you're doing. Just ignore me. And then later in the photo, it won't really show that that person was kind of aware that you were taking the photo. Asking is, is, is really a simple thing. It's kind of scary to talk to a stranger, but, you know, approach them with a compliment of some sort. I mean, if someone, people with dogs, easiest people in the world to take a picture of. You just go, oh, that's, that's a cute dog. Can they I like it. <laughs> yeah. you, get, you get down on your knees, you take a picture of the dog, you kind of tilt the camera up, and all of a sudden you have this beautiful picture with a dog in the foreground and the owner in the background. So... People are, people are proud of the things they show off. The people with like lots of jewelry or lots of tattoos or uh, lots of piercings and things um, are, they, they want to be seen. So oh, those that's a good are point. usually really, those are the people really I want happy take, for the picture. Yeah, those are the people I want to take pictures of, the freaks. Yes, the, the, the characters. <laughs> the, the, the characters. It's about the that's characters. About See, that's, where, that's why you're good at this. You, I call them freaks. And they punch me. You call them characters. Of course. Yeah. And it really, really, most of the time, people who are kind of different don't have any problems with their picture being taken. And yeah. of course, smile a lot. Smiling is, is, is the secret weapon. Smiling is the key that opens all these doors. Yeah. Um, by the way, this also works really well for the third category. And that's if you travel and if you get go to a foreign country and you meet people that you don't even speak the language of, communicate non-verbally. I mean, point, smile. They will get they, they will get that you want to that you want to take their picture. They will understand that. And it doesn't need any talking. It helps to have a few words in that language, like um, maybe ask someone to to tell you what to say when you want to ask for like one photo, just one photo. And most people in a foreign country, I have learned, you go are, like you just hold up a finger and you go, one photo, one. Well, yeah. Or okay. I, I, in January, I was in Ethiopia and I learned that one photo is under photo. And ah. when when you say that, when, whenever I said that, people. Initially, they might they might have been shy, and then I said that, and then they instantly realized, wow, he's making an effort. He's yeah. not just like this guy who's who wants to steal our photo. He has put some effort in it, and that usually ended up giving me the biggest smiles, and people were just just fine. Smiles. I'm trying. To, I'm going to try to say this without sounding too creepy. What if there's a really pretty girl or woman? I mean, that's, you know, a model, right? And and she's walking down the street and you think, boy, that would be a great... I saw a woman the other day. She was dressed all in red. She would look beautiful. And I would have loved to have taken a picture. But it's but I feel like it's kind of creepy if an old man like me says, can I take your picture, lady? I think it depends on the cultural context. I'm, I'm not sure what, what that would be like. you better do it, not me. <laughs> Petaluma, but I can I can imagine asking asking a beautiful girl in Berlin, for example, yeah. in inner city somewhere. It's like, wow, look. What do you say? Maybe, you maybe say you're gorgeous. Wow, look, I'm look not hitting on you. I just want to take a picture. You uh, look so beautiful. No, that's. I would probably right. pick something out that that person is proud of. Maybe a beautiful uh, dress or a beautiful nice hat. Shoes. Or yeah. Look, look at those shoes. Wow, amazing. Mm. Oh, I can take a picture um, of the shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and then and then you're a creep because of the. Sh I can't win. Shoe I I <laughs> love taking people pictures, but I am very shy. I don't want them to pose, so I don't want to get their attention because then they freeze and pose, and that's not a good picture. I I, I need to learn how to do this because that's what I like well, taking you, pictures of best is people. You need the experience of doing it and 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 experiencing it to work, and the moment that starts happening, that people start uh, start reacting in a positive way. Then it's kind of it turns fun. into this positive yeah. loop, you know. Yet it's it's feedback to you. It makes you yeah. more. Um, it, it makes you trust your abilities more, and that's when you start getting more positive uh, responses from people. So I've watched, it's really this self uh, fulfilling thing happening. Exactly. There. I've watched really great photographers work in that kind of environment with street photos, and and there's something about them. They're lovely people, and people just can sense that they mean no harm. That they're beautiful spirits and they participate and i look at that and i go i'll never be able to do that oh, oh well would. <laughs> i get a lot of pictures of disgruntled people chris marquardt discover the top floor.com thank you for your tips more of your calls coming up i just get a lot of a lot of women going get out of here you creep Get out of here!
here, but this is a Leica. Get out of here, you creep. Do you know? <laughs> Come on, it's a Leica. You're going to look it's great. It's a... It's a matter of practice. It's uh, this is really a matter of practice. I'm just I'm actually shy. I know people don't believe. Well, that. me too. But it works. It works. Actually, it works best in countries where you don't speak the language. Right. The nonverbal communication makes right. it so easy. Makes it really easy. We were mm. uh, where were we? I think it was Germany. And Lisa started taking picture. There was a kind of uh, some guys on the riverbank talking. It was a great picture. One was on a bicycle, and then one was smoking, and they were talking. And Lisa took their picture, and they started yelling at her. So she just yelled back and ran. <laughs> it's a great picture, they were, though. No, 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 no. They, they were just speaking German. It sounds like yelling. Yeah, yeah all yeah. German sounds like yelling. <laughs> um, I think, I think you know, it's, I think there is a, there's some countries, Germany's a good one, where privacy, you know, and perhaps it's not acceptable. To, it's, this is a problem, is I don't know. It's not acceptable to just take pictures of people in public. Uh, it, I don't know. I I think it depends on where you are. I mean, there are so many places in Germany, and and I have I have to I have to. Okay, I'm German. I live in Germany. Most Germans are just very friendly and happy. And that was my experience. Yeah. It depends on where you but, are. So so, but that's my biggest problem is I I don't want to take a sneak a picture. But I also don't want to you know get them posing. So that's the trick, guys. You have to spend time, I guess. Well, you have to spend a bit of time. You have yeah. to make sure they understand that you're not a threat and then right. ask them and, 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 and tell them, oh, just keep going. You can even gesture that if you don't speak German, you're in Germany and, and someone's doing, is working on something and, and you kind of communicate to them that you want to take their picture and then they, they, they pose and then you go, no, 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 keep, keep doing what you're doing. Right. Just gesture to oh, them. No, and, I loved how that looked. Yeah. Just pretend I'm not here. Just speak English, they will understand. Yeah, I know. They speak English, but I speak German, that's for sure. <laughs> so are okay, you so you're I gonna will, be here next week. No, I no. will be back on the twenty seventh. I'm not gonna see you for a month. That's I'm good. You know sorry. what? That gives me lots of chances to take pictures of water. Well, yes. Is that our assignment? Too. Wawa? Yes, it is. Okay. It is. Like bike Lake Baikal, I'll have lots of frozen oh, water. There's a lake. Mm -hmm. There's a the lake Baikal, where you're biggest going. Biggest sweetwater lake in the world. Is it? Was it? A, is it a crater? Um, I don't know, I don't but know it's it's like the oldest, cleanest, blah, blah whatever. And then blah, winter, blah, it's blah, blah. it's frozen. It's frozen. We're we're actually gonna drive uh, on the lake in cars and things. Yeah, fun. So, you're gonna have a wonderful time. It's such a contrast cold. though between uh, spring and Tuscany, which will be beautiful. It will be. Yeah, it'll. <sighs> And then Let, let's see how winter this in Russia. In Russia. Russia, Mother Russia. Yes. All right. Thank you, sir. Have a great trip. Um, I'll see you in a month. I'm gonna send you an email with the date just to make sure that okay. this uh, that that you expect me back on the 27th. You got it. All right. See Thank ya. you, sir. Have fun. Bye, Take Chris. Care. He's leaving us. <sighs> oh, my pill pack. You know, I gotta get Steve Gibson. He's been sending me vitamins. I gotta get him to send him this way. This is the best way for your medications, your prescriptions. Pillpack.com. I want you to visit the website, pillpack.com slash twit. It's a pharmacy. So it's a great pharmacy. It's an online pharmacy. 24-7. You could talk to a pharmacist in the privacy of your own home. No more of those uncomfortable conversations in the middle of the drugstore where everybody's looking at you. You find out everything you need. They will transfer over your prescription. But first, they'll make sure your insurance works. And it does. Almost all of it does, including Medicare Part D. There's no extra cost for pill pack beyond your standard copays. And what do you get? You get this. Instead of getting a bunch of bottles you can't open, you get this box. They're packed by robots, checked by pharmacists. And your medications are in here. And this is a couple of features I really like. First of all, on the back of the box, your name the date period that these prescriptions are for. That's important. I'll, I'll tell you why. And then pictures of every medication or vitamin or over-the-counter medication, its name, and the dosing that, that your physician recommended or that's recommended by the manufacturer. That's here, so it's great for reference. And then, and this is the best part, you can tear off a pill pack. And so this is for noon Saturday, uh, June 27th. It's got the day, the date, the time, what's in it. And that way you never have to guess, did I take my pills? Did I? If you're traveling, you just take off all the pills you need for that period of time and put it in your suitcase. It's easy. 
is really the best way. And if you've got a, a family member, an, uh, somebody who's on medication and needs to remember to take them, this is the best. This is the best. So, pillpack.com slash twit. They will proactively contact your, do your doctor, transfer the prescription over. They'll let you know if it's covered. Of course, you want to know that before they transfer. Time Magazine called it one of their top 25 in inventions of the year. D Jill Duffy gave it a great review. Our friend Jill Duffy in PC Magazine, she gave it the editor's choice. It is so cool. It is such a smart use of the Internet. Pillpack.com slash twit. And as a little thank you, when you sign up at that address and you transfer your prescriptions over to Pillpack, they're going to give you credit for $20 worth of vitamins or over-the-counter medications. Really good idea. And if you've got a family member that needs to remember and is not, this is a really great way to go. Pillpack.com slash twit. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. So Chris is on uh, vacation for the next few weeks, <clears throat> but that gives us a few extra weeks to take pictures of water. That's our assignment. It has been for the last few weeks. You know, Chris does this every month or so. We, we, he gives you a word or an idea or a concept and asks you to take pictures illustrating it and submit those pictures to our tech guy group. That's on Flickr. If you don't have a Flickr account and you're a photographer, you ought to make one because it's a great place to share your photos. And our tech guy group has some more than 10,000 members and there's lots of pictures up there. What you should do is take a picture of water and tag it with water. Pick your best one of the week. You can upload as many as one a week. Our moderator, Renee Silverman, will welcome you into the group if you join and, and, and acknowledge the receipt of your submission. It's just for fun. It's not a competition. But Chris will pick three of, his mo of the most interesting pictures to talk about on the radio, of all things. And that'll be when he comes back and we get, up, get a few extra weeks to take pictures of water. Whatever that means. Could be a body of water. Could be whatever that means to you. 8888-ASK-LEO. Sigmund on the line from London. Hello, Sigmund. Hello there, Leo. How, How are you? Doing? I'm great. Yeah. Um, I've got a quick question for you. Um, I had a heart surgery this time last year, um, which basically replaced my aortic valve with a mechanical one. Wow. And a problem, a problem I have is it ticks. I've got a YouTube channel, which I just started, um, just to kind of build up my confidence in talking. But when I record the audio, the microphone picks up those ticks, and it sounds like... <laughs> Really? Like I'm chewing at the No, same come time. on. Are you this is a you're teasing me now. No, no, I I'm I'm for real. So um, so the the artificial aortic valve like is it doing it right now? Yes. Could I hear it? I guess I'd have to watch I'm not sure. I'd have to watch your YouTube video. What's your YouTube channel? Um well what I've been doing is I've been manually splicing out those hits. Oh, boy. Um, which is taking, like, hours for a three-minute video. But my YouTube channel, if I can plug it, is youtube.com forward slash TVOS today. I like it. What do you talk about? Um, talk about Apple TV. And actually, um, my, inspiration, my inspiration was uh, iOS today. When you had um, a bit of bit of fun with the Apple TV setting yeah. it up, yeah. Um, so I started it maybe five weeks ago. I've got like sixteen, uh, sorry, thirteen. So where where is the microphone that you're uh, using for your okay, video? So the microphone, the microphone I use is a Blue Yeti. Yeah. Mic. It's, okay. It's. It, it's a standard YouTube mic from all of the videos I saw, and I picked it up cheap. No, it's a good, it's a good uh, mic. I like that mic, but it is, it's a condenser mic. It's very sensitive. And so, by the way, uh, Dr. Mom in our chat room, my own personal physician, who's monitoring me constantly in the chat room, says it's not unusual for a mechanical heart valve to ha to have an audible click. Yeah, and, that's correct. And how how is it tick 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 tick, or is it spread out yeah, a little? It's, it's constant. It's constant. Um, so it took me a little while to get used to, um, but I'm healthy. I've just got a bit of a tick. I'm so I'm so I glad you're healthy. That's you know what? That's worth it. So the Yeti, because it's a condenser mic, 
is very sensitive. And if it's anywhere near your chest area, it's gonna, it is going to pick that up. It's one of the reasons I don't use, and many radio stations don't use, condenser mics. Because they're very uh, sensitive. They'll pick up a lot of room noise and room tone and stuff. The mic I'm using uh, here is a... Um, is a dynamic mic, is a large diaphragm dynamic mic, and I can use it in a studio that is not particularly uh, soundproof. You know, I don't have egg cartons on the wall and stuff, but because it doesn't pick up a lot of external sound, it's it's less sensitive, it's, so it's better. The Yetis can be can be tuned, however. The Yeti, as you know, has a pattern setting, and so you can make it uh, be a less uh, uh, more directional pattern more towards your mouth. You can move the mic, too. I, you're not on camera during the videos, right? Or are you? No, I'm not on camera. It's, you're just narrating. It's like yeah. Yeah, indeed. So I'm you might you might put the microphone above you. Uh, you know, what you've got to do is, the blue mic, people misuse this mic all the time. For instance, they talk into the top of it instead of the side, very commonly. Okay. So make sure you look at the manual, and you'll see that on the blue Yeti, you need to talk into the side where the logo is, and that's where the pickup is. Put, Move that so it's above you, a little higher up, maybe enough distance from your heart that it's not okay. going to pick up those clicks. Or perhaps turn your head to the right or left. The idea being the closer that pickup is to your heart, the, cl the more likely it's going to pick up those clicks. You're doing okay. another thing which you can do because it's a quick, transient sound. It's very obvious when you see the audio, isn't it? Yes. It's very easy to silence it. Um, but you are probably also silencing a little bit of your voice at the same time. Yeah, I find that the, the kind of flow and momentum yeah. kind of yeah. moves around and kind of cuts it up a little bit. Um, so it means that I'm having to do maybe 12 takes. Oh, how frustrating. How so, frustrating. Well, it's worth it. It's hey, worth you got a good ticker. That's what counts. You sound like a young guy. Was this a congenital heart defect, or if you don't mind me yeah, asking? Um, this, no, not at all. This is my second heart surgery, oh and I may need a possible third. Um, however, um, yeah, I've got my mechanical valve. I actually did a run last year um, at the end of last year. Wow. Um, so, which I'd never, ever done before. That is um, fantastic, Sigmund. That is really great. So, one, so, one last question, if you don't mind. Yeah. And I do apologize because I know other people are on the, on the, um, well, you waited. On the line. You waited. You, 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 you paid your dues. You waited. <laughs> okay, so I have, uh, I answer many Apple TV questions, but I have one that I just cannot answer. Hmm. And that's quite simply, um, you can use Bluetooth earphones to pair with the Apple TV. However, you can only use one pair of headphones. Right. And my question for anyone in the chat room is, is there a way of splitting Bluetooth, a Bluetooth audio signal um, so that more than one person can listen privately? Bluetooth. So you'd like to have two people sitting in front of the Apple TV, both of them with Bluetooth headphones, listening to the program. Indeed. Yeah. That, that is, of, unfortunately, a limitation of Bluetooth. You can have many devices paired, but only one is active at any one time for the Bluetooth okay. audio, I believe. So the easiest way to do this would be a Bluetooth receiver that was a headphone amp that could split it out. So that you wear normal headphones plugged into a Bluetooth receiver. Then you only have one thing receiving the audio, but it's amplifying it and splitting it out. That would be the only way I could think. But let's ask the chat room. Because you're right. They, they're, you know they're smart. Are you in there, Sigmund? Yeah, I am. Um, I'm under, under name TOS Today. Ah, oh, um, nice. Well, and I'm going to watch your videos. TVOS Today. It's at YouTube.com slash TVOS Today. And uh, I'm not sure uh, the best way. There are, as the chat room is mentioning, uh, audio programs often have ways to reduce or eliminate regular sounds. The clicking is going to be a little hard. If it were... Uh, a background hum, that'd be easy. You sample uh, the sound and, and Audacity and programs like it can then remove it. But a transient is harder. Uh, I think editing is probably the right thing uh, to do, but you're right, that's going to hurt it as well. And, and, maybe, and maybe upgrade to a condenser mic. Yeah. Although Burke's pointing out uh, that there's software that does this all the time for records. You know, if you have a, if you're, 
digitizing a vinyl record often one of the as good as people like vinyl records as good as it might sound one of the problems with vinyl records are they get scratches and that gives you an audible click 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 and there's de-clicking software for recording vinyl records that would probably work as well okay yeah That's brilliant yeah there's a thought thank, thank you burke thank you thank you so much for your time leo and thank you for calling sigmund i'm glad the uh, uh go ahead i, I hope I hope in the near future um, I'll, you know, manage to get on your reserve list for iOS today. Deal. Mac Break Weekly. Deal. We'll e make it happen. E e all you have to do is email me with a, an idea or a tip for iOS today. We'll put you on as our, our expert from the UK. Fantastic. Hey, it's great to talk to you, Sigmund. All right. Thank hey, you. Have, have a, a great have week. A great, yeah, have a great week yourself. We, uh, thanks to the internet. Callers from all over the world. He's talking about a podcast that I do with my friend Megan Maroney every uh, Monday uh, on our podcast network, uh, twit.tv. It's called iOS Today, and we talk about all the iOS devices, Apple's iPhone, Apple Watch, but also uh, tvOS, the Apple TV, and, uh, and it's a lot of fun. Twit.tv slash iOS Today. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Yeah, magic audio. Yeah, yeah, that's for recording vinyl. I remember that. It's a click removing tool. Isn't that awesome? Absolutely right, uh, right, Burke. Well, that's what I was thinking, Lou, is uh, maybe not splitting at the source, but having a Bluetooth receiver that you could plug headphones in that was a headphone amp, and then you could have multiple analog, you know, physical headphones plugged into it. Hmm. <sighs> Yeah, IR is another way to do it. Absolutely. IR is probably a better way. The only thing I don't like about IR headphones when you're watching TV is if you turn your head, the sound goes out. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, smartphones, smartwatches, all that jazz. 8888-ASK-LEO is the phone number. Sandra on the line from Bedford, Indiana. Hello, Sandra. Hi. How are you? Hi. I'm well. How are you? I'm doing good. What is up? Well, um, I've got a grandson that I'm trying to get him to use his calendar on his phone. <laughs> yeah. how, how old is your grandson? Oh, 21. <laughs> yeah, my son's 21. My daughter's 24. Uh, my daughter's in college. She says, I really need to keep track of all my assignments and classes. So I bought a paper calendar. I said, Abby, I said, Abby, you have an iPhone. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't want to use that. Oh, my. Uh, so we're in the same boat. I don't have any solution for you. <laughs> now, is he is he not using anything? I don't think so. Yeah. Not much. So he's late. He misses assignments because you got to keep track of this stuff. Exactly. I thought, I wondered if there was an app. There is. Okay. Now he has an iPhone. What kind of phone is it? You know, I, I thought he said a PS6, but I, I didn't write it uh, down. It might be a GS6. He might have an Android Galaxy S6. That's a GS6. I don't know. That's Android. So um, that's part of the, you know, that's part of the thing you need to know. Um, can, can you do me? Can you tell me for the Android? Yeah, if it is a GS6. Uh, there's a lot of school apps. There's some really good ones also for um, for iPhone that are designed for students. So you can input your class schedule and automatically add that to a calendar. It can keep track of assignments. Um, there's some really good apps out there. Okay. Consumer Reports has a uh, an article from a year ago, but I think it's still probably germane. 19 top free apps for college students. I'm going to put a link to that it is online i'm going to put a link to that in the um in the chat notes the chat. planner that they recommend for android and i th i i think this might also be available for ios i remember seeing this is called studious s-t-u-d-i-o-u-s and okay. it will let you put your class schedules your deadlines you could take notes on it you could take pictures so you might want to take a picture of the blackboard if there's a some, mm -hmm. you know, something on there um, and it will, and this is beautiful. This is great. It will automatically silence your phone during class time, 
so it won't nice. ring by accident. It's intended for college kids, studious. Nice. On on the um, on the uh, Apple side, actually, this is Apple and Android. It might be a better choice. Depends. There's something called My Homework. My Homework, one word, student planner, does the same thing. But one of the things I like about this is it integrates with a tool that many professors use called teachers.io. And if his professor, and this is one thing that he's going to know and you're going to have to, you know, you can't force, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't, oh, I know. You can't make it use a calendar. I know. So, but if maybe you show him some, oh, look, and this would do this, maybe that would get him excited about it. Um, if the teacher uses teachers.io, which a lot of teachers do, they you can sync up. You don't even have to enter anything. You can sync up with the teacher's uh, syllabus and and schedule and all of that. So it's all wow. automatic. I know. Wouldn't that be great? Mm -hmm. But that's something he he can ask at his school. Like what you know? Is there a, what do you use? Truth okay. is, most teachers you know don't use Actually, anything. He, he's almost finished with his schooling right now, but. He just needs to be able to keep track of his appointments. Yeah. Man, I am very sympathetic. I My whole life, I've been late. <laughs> I, uh, my whole life. And I have taken the Franklin Planner course. I have taken oh, the Dave Allen Getting Things Done course. I have used and tried to use every methodology in the book. And mostly what it ends up being is me spending a lot of money on day timers and special doohickeys and doodads, spending many hours setting it all up and then never using it again. You sound like me. It's normal. Right. My wife's got a, a new hypnosis uh, uh, program she found on the internet that uh, is supposed to help you beat procrastination. She keeps she keeps saying you should listen to this, and I say, well, I'll, I'll do that tomorrow. I'm gonna. There might be some, there might be something in there though that she's gonna <laughs> trick you with. <laughs> Yeah, beat procrastination and buy me diamond jewelry, something like that. That probably combined, you know. Liminal. Yeah. <laughs> no, I've. It's been a lifelong um, problem for me. You know, sometimes it's not a bad thing because what it ended up, what it ended up happening is I real, I just could never do it. So I managed to find a career where I had people who would do that for me, called producers. Well, that's <laughs> and that's worked out quite well. <laughs> I I I I have to have a shepherd. There's somebody shepherding me around most of the time. So maybe oh, maybe maybe your son will arrange arrange to get a shepherd. Oh, he needs one, but I know. I don't know. I know. It's it's kind of the human condition, isn't it? You can't. There there are wonderful wonderful uh, time management tools on both Android and iOS. It's such a natural because this thing is in your pocket. It has alarms. It could do. I mean, you can record. Right. It's such a natural. But that's you, the one thing most people take with them is their phone. Yeah, and you got it all in there. And but I, you know, and I have. Believe me, I just set up another to do list system just the other day. So I, <laughs> it works usually for the first week. I find. Now do these? Do these? Are they the ones that you talk into? Do you have to. You could dictate, absolutely, you could dictate okay. to it. Uh, all iPhones and Android phones allow you to set reminders and, and to-do lists with your voice. Okay. Uh, so he can say, okay, Google, uh, remind me that my papers do a Friday at 4 p.m., and it will do that. But it won't do it till Friday at 4 p.m. Might be a little late. So, but, it, but it's a good start anyway. At least they'll be in the phone there somewhere. So there are built-in features. There's a built-in calendar with reminders. Um, and then there are dedicated programs. But, you know, getting somebody to use it is another matter entirely. And I don't have any advice for you on that. Since oh, I, I know. Well, I'm going to tell him what I did. So he'll see that I made an effort. Made yeah. It. Tell, I think the, the, the one that... Uh, I think of the two that Consumer Reports mentions, I really think that uh, the My Homework Student Planner okay. is probably the one to go with, iOS and Android. Okay. Um, and then, uh, but there are many other uh, choices out there. If you just, in fact, you could just look on the Android store. If it is an Android phone he has, there's a, a Google Play store and you could search for Student Planner and you'll find dozens of choices. Okay. So he might find something well, I, he really likes. I have a younger grandson that will be going to college next fall. So I bet he's organized. Um, 
better. Yes. Yeah. So, sometimes that happens where uh, siblings, one is terrible at this and one is great at this because they they have to find their own you know unique voice. Oh no. <laughs> my son's great at money. Don't ask me about my daughter. Just don't ask me. <laughs> hey, it's great to talk to you. It's nice of you to help out, Sandra, and uh, maybe that helped uh, a little bit. Yeah, you gave me some ideas. Good. All right. Hey, thanks for calling. I appreciate it. 8888 Ask Leo is the number. I'll try to help you do that thing I can't do. Get, get organized? What are you, crazy? Just a bit. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888 Ask Leo. The phone number. Back to the phones we go. Rich is in Selmar, California. Is it a Selmar? What is it? Where are you? Sel yeah, hello. Hello. How are you doing, Rich? How are you doing? Good. Very good. Very good. Uh, you were talking earlier about that uh, ransomware. Yeah. I got that. Oh, no. So, yeah. So now the question is, I have the link for the Windows, uh, to install Windows 10. Can I, if I wipe the computer... Because, uh, you know, it's kind of, kind of a second computer, so I don't have anything really, really... Oh, important. that's a relief. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so if I wiped it, uh, can I get window, the link for window, to install Windows 10? Yeah. So here's how that... It's, you're talking about the free upgrade, right? Correct. Yeah. So if you have Windows 7 or Windows 8.1, Microsoft will upgrade you for free. In fact, they've probably been pestering you since July. To, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I'm not real impressed with it. But that's I like Windows cool. 10. Um, it's not going to help you with this. Uh, you've already lost your data, whatever data was on there. But you can actually just install Windows 10 on top of this. Well, here's, the, here's what you need to do. Microsoft has replaced the license key with something they call an entitlement. You are entitled to upgrade to Windows 10, to authenticate Windows 10, to use Windows 10 forever for free. Well, and I shouldn't say you, because it isn't you. It's your computer. Your computer is entitled, and the entitlement is attached to the machine. And this is how Microsoft's wanted to do it for piracy reasons for a long time. So the process goes that you upgrade your Windows 7 or 8.1 to Windows 10, Microsoft sees that you had a legitimate copy because it was activated of Windows 8 in the install process, installs 10, and then activates it. This is what you need to make sure that it's legitimate. Once it's activated, at that point, you can wipe the drive. You can erase it and download Windows 10. Microsoft offers free Windows 10 downloads. They call them ISOs. So if you search for Windows 10 ISO and then make sure you only get it from Microsoft. Don't get it from anybody but Microsoft.com. But the Windows 10 ISO, you download it, you put it on a USB key or a C, I guess that'd be the best, put it on a USB key, install Windows 10 on that blank drive, Windows 10 will boot, Microsoft will go, oh, wait a minute, oh, we know this guy, he's entitled. They know your machine, because it has a unique identifier, and it says, okay, that's fine, and it reactivates. So that's the process. The key is to get it to activate once. And from then on, you can wipe the drive all you want. You could probably even put in another drive. They're not completely clear how they identify your machine, but most, I think, in most cases, we it's the it, there's a serial number in the BIOS of the machine that's kind of like hardware. It's burned into it, um, so that means you could change stuff. And and as long as your motherboard is unchanged, you'd still be able to install Windows 10. Now it's a little complicated because you have malware. You have a completely corrupted computer. Um, you should still be able to upgrade. So that's the first thing I would try. There are other ways to do this, but that's the first thing I would try. Just see if you can upgrade to Windows 10. Now, understanding you're not going to use that installation because it's corrupt. It's got bad stuff on it. But at least it'll activate, and then you can completely erase the drive and start over. And at that point, uh, you'd be golden. There are ways to do it with a without a working copy of Windows 7 or 8.1 now on your system but it's a little more it's a little more complicated i mean um so the first thing i try is just see can, can i do a windows 10 upgrade just see even though i know i got malware on here um because the malware won't come with it you know you'll you'll have a separate windows 10 installer on a usb drive that's safe um the other process, and my friend Paul Therat has it documented, if you, if you want to do it without having Windows 7 or 8 on the system, at his site, Therat, T-H-U, 
R-R-O-T-T dot com. It involves kind of wiping the drive because you want to get rid of all traces of that infection, reinstalling Windows 7 or 8.1, letting it activate, and now upgrading to Windows 10. I, I'm not sure which is more work. I'd try just upgrading right now. Because remember, you are going to wipe out any infection. You know, I really worry when I hear people have malware on this system, you know, the, uh, the most important thing to think about is how did I get this? Because it will happen again unless you really kind of think about what was it that I did and don't do that again. Almost certainly you fell for a scam of some kind. You got an email that purported to be from your bank or the IRS saying, click this link. We got problems here. You got to log in and then download a copy of the PDF or whatever. It will always, in always involve downloading something. In some cases, you don't even have to run it. Just downloading it and viewing it is sufficient. But in many cases, you will. So they'll pose as a, an installer for Flash or some other program. You, you, oh, it looks like Adobe. It's Flash. It must be okay. I, I always have to upgrade that darn Flash, except it's not. It's CryptoLocker uh, or Tesla or some one of these other ransomware. So very important you understand what it is that got you in trouble and not do that again because it'll just happen again. Windows 10 won't protect you any better than Windows 8 did. Thanks for the call. Good luck. And, and make sure you have a good backup. Please. Uh, we're going to take a break. We'll come back. Lots more coming up. Joseph in Highland, California. Stay here. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Half an hour left in the tech guy show. Let's see how many calls I can get in that uh, 30 minutes. Starting with Joseph, Highland, California. Hello, Joseph. Hi. So I have a question for you. Um, my Mac, I, I went through cleaning it out. I've had it for about five years. It's a 2011 mm -hmm. iMac. Good. And uh, it, it's full of junk because I don't clean it out because that's what Mac users do. You don't need clean to clean it out. Clean it out? What do you mean clean it out? Yeah, we don't it's do that. It's not a back alley. You don't have to dump the trash out. Why yeah, you? you know, it's, <laughs> it's just it's a California thing. What have you been putting on there? Well, okay, so I download videos through uTorrent. Uh, oh, okay. And uh, I download I download a lot of music files because I'm a musician, okay. so I cool. use Logic a lot. So I think that has a lot to do with my space. So I went through the other day and deleted all the movies I had. I deleted almost every movie, a lot of videos, nice. a lot of memories that I want to keep. So I kept stuff. Good. But I still have 172 gigabytes worth of movies, like taking up my computer space. Dang you, movies! Yeah. So uh, what do you what do you want to do? You want to keep well, them? I want to. I want to get rid of all what's taking up 172 gigs. I just don't know where to find it. Ah, okay. Well, I'll give you a couple of tips here. First of all, there's a free program called Disk Inventory X. You can Google it. Disk Inventory X. It's nice for this because it gives you a visual, graphical display of what's eaten up space on your drive, and you'll see, like all the uh, all the movies will be one big blob of color. And you, so you can see, oh, wow, that's taken up. And you'll know immediately, oh, there's too much of that. You can right-click on them. You can actually delete them from there. It's a very handy little free tool to give you a good sense of who's using up your disk space. Right. Generally, what I would do, and I think it's a good idea, and I do it uh, you know, every year or so on almost all my computers, is, is start from scratch. So this is a great opportunity to make a backup of stuff you want. Get an external drive. USB drive, they're cheap. I just bought a four terabyte drive for like $110. You don't need a drive okay. that big, obviously. That's bigger than your internal drive. But get a get an external drive. You can just drag stuff over that you know you want. Only drag the doc the data over, right? Don't drag anything else. Maybe uh, not even apps, just data, just movies, documents, whatever it is that you've made that you want to keep. And then the Apple uh, system is very easy to to start from scratch. You reboot the machine and you hold down, uh, uh, I think it's Command R. Yeah, Command key, you know, the Apple key and R. And that's going to allow you to rebuild your computer. You can actually wipe the drive off first, use disk, uh, the disk utility to wipe the drive off, and then reinstall the operating system. It will install the version of the operating system the computer came with, so it'll be a little out of date. But the very next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the App Store 
and update it to El Capitan. The Captain. El Capitan. El Capitan. Yeah. Get the newest version of that. Get all the software, you know, the updates, all the patches. You can, if anything you bought in the App Store is easy to reinstall, you just go to the Purchased section, the Purchase tab, and re-download those apps. You might want to reinstall any apps you didn't buy that way. If you're a musician, you probably have a few, you know, apps for that. Uh, yeah. And the nice thing is that's starting from scratch. That's really going to clean up everything. Cool. I do that. I do that pretty regularly, and Apple makes it very easy to do. But do a clean install. Now you'll have a backup. You can restore your data onto the internal drive, but keep the external drive around. In fact, maybe even turn on Time Machine or some sort of backup system. So that external drive, I use Super Duper. I love this. I'm using it right now on the Mac that's sitting right next to me. And what it does is it periodically fires up, synchronizes the external and the internal disk so they're identical, even to the point where I can boot to it. So if my internal disk dry, dies, I just reboot, hold down the option key, and boot to the external drive, and I'm exactly the same as it was with the internal drive. Oh, awesome. Yeah, super I had, duper. I had, I had an external, and then I dropped it. So yeah, don't drop like, your drives. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work because I was reading. You can drop your drawers, but do not drop your drives. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but that helps a lot. That helps a lot. Yeah, I think it's worth doing. Yeah, everything, and it feels fresh and clean. It's spring cleaning for your hard drive. Yeah, I mean, it runs pretty slow because of all the yeah. stuff that's just yeah. in there. And don't, you know, the other thing to do is not reinstall everything. Sometimes we're tempted, oh, I want to get it back exactly the way it was. No, you don't. That's the whole point. So only install stuff as you need it. You may find okay. a lot of those programs you installed two years ago you thought you needed, you never use. I do that with my phones. I do that with my Windows machines. I do that with my Macs. It's not necessary, but it. I feel like it does. It just kind of tidies up a little bit. Gets rid of any gunk that's seeped in. Bruce, Huntington Beach, California. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hello. Hey, Bruce. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Fantastic. I'm going to talk quickly. I know you're running short on time. Leo, I've called before, uh, not about this, but and always gotten, always received uh, excellent uh, advice. Thank you. I've got a MacBook Air, 2012, mid 2012, and it's boot camped so that Windows starts by default. Okay. I, I'm constantly getting messages from Microsoft asking me to upgrade to Windows 10. I hate you know, that. All right. Well, I uh, I hit them, uh, of course, but. You know what? I want to upgrade. I think I, I'm running Windows 7, of course. Well, you might as well. In fact, I like Windows 10 a lot, and it is free. Uh, and it, it's not guaranteed to stay free after July 29th. So. Well, I'm not worried about the money. What I'm worried about, will, will I have any up, uh, problems because I'm running uh, uh, a boot camp machine? Are the drivers there that I would need uh so I, my keyboard, my monitor, my uh, screen will be working. You know what? That's a great question because it's Apple hardware. So it, in Windows world, the manufacturer of the hardware provides drivers so that Windows 10 can talk to it because they figure, hey, nobody knows better than the guy who made the board or the, or the computer how to talk to it. In the case of Boot Camp, which is Apple's dual boot system, so you can run Windows and Macintosh on the same hardware, Apple's responsible for those drivers. Fortunately, Apple has made those drivers available. 64-bit Windows 10. As long as well, your I mean, Mac is... I it, don't have a 64... I don't have 64-bit, I don't think. I'm 32. What... Um, that's all right. Windows... Windows no, but what... Uh, how old is the Mac? Uh, 2012. Mid -2012. Oh, you're fine. Yeah, so that's a 64-bit computer. And the nice thing about the Windows license is you get 32 or 64, whatever makes sense. All right, will I need any registration keys? Nope. Okay. This is that thing, I don't know if you were listening a minute ago, but this is the new entitlement system. So it's well, uh, it's no, registered to that Mac. For, for, from yes. Microsoft's point of view, that Macintosh is a Windows computer. Right. So in other words, all I do is I click on it and I sit back and pray. <laughs> well, that's no different than any, anything else you do with a computer, but yes. So here's uh, there's an article, and I'm going to recommend it uh, from Apple Support. It's uh, uh, 204990. I'll put a link in the uh, show notes that says, Using Windows 10 on your Mac with Boot Camp. 
And uh, you can see if you have a supported model, you do, because you have a late model Mac. Mm -hmm. You'll see where you can download the ISO from Microsoft of Windows 10. And you'll see how you get the drivers. And you have several choices. You can either perform a new install of Windows 10 or an upgrade install. You want to do an upgrade. That way you'll have it automatically licensed. It does say you want the 64-bit. But you can upgrade from an, uh, an existing 32-bit version of Windows. You just need to you need to use the 64-bit for the new version. All right. All right and, so how and do it, I find out if I have a 32 or a 64? I thought doesn't I matter. Would, I... You can find out by uh, looking in the uh, in the properties of your Windows uh, install. But it doesn't matter. You can install. You don't. It's not two separate SKUs. It's all one one version of Windows. So all I do is I click on it, and it should... Uh, It'll just upgrade. Say, it. yes, thank you for annoying me for the last six months. I'm ready. Upgrade me, man. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. And here's the list. Anything 2012 is going to be uh, it's going to be supported. So they give you a fully, you know, that's the only question. Has Apple written Windows 10 drivers? And the answer is yes. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888-ASK-LEO. Don't forget the website. I'll be gone in a few minutes, but you're not alone. The website is there all the time, 24-7, techguylabs.com, with answers to many of your questions. After all, this is episode, what is it, 1,266. And they're all on the website, audio and video and answers and questions and even from today's show. So uh, keep that in mind. It's, it's free. There's no sign up. There's no, I don't want your money. I don't want your email address even. Just go to techguylabs.com and use it to your heart's content. Steve is on the line. He's next from New Jersey. Hello, Steve. Hi, how you doing? I'm great. So I'm going to actually bring you into a family discussion here. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Okay. Just make sure you tell me what your side is first. <laughs> I think it, I think you're going to guess. I don't want to get I don't want to get in the middle here. All right. <laughs> so here's the story. I have um, we have a storage unit. And we were getting ready to clean it out, and we were going through some of the stuff in the storage unit, and we have piles and piles and piles of old software, the 1.0 stuff. What? Where, what do you mean, like in boxes? Yeah, in its original in its original stuff, all stuck into milk crates. So we have like the Lotus One Two Three One, wow. Microsoft Windows, the original. It's wow. all of the original stuff. That's pretty cool. So, me and my wife, the discussion is basically: here's my side. I'm going. I think someday this thing will be something that'll wind up in a museum. Something somebody's going to want to look at. Something like that. My wife's side of it is: it's going to wind up in a garbage pile. Throw it out. Does she have any Beanie Babies, maybe um, Superman action figures in the original box, anything like that? Nah, she doesn't. Yeah. Have no collateral you can use against her, huh? No, nah, nothing I can yeah. use. Against. Yeah, stuff she can use against me, but it's not that. <laughs> I'm just saying, um, we all live in hope Yeah. <laughs> that uh, this junk will someday turn into gold. Yeah. The problem is that how many millions of copies of Lotus One Two Three were made? Right. right. It's not scarce. Right. I imagine that you're right in one sense that the let's see the Computer History Museum in Boston, the Smithsonian Museum in Washington. There might be three or four people who would want a copy. Okay. Maybe. Okay. That's about it. There's no collector's. I don't think there's any collector's value. Although I shouldn't say that because we have an engineer here who he's a windows guy but for some reason collects old macintosh manuals okay so here's what i would do go on ebay and see if any of this stuff is for sale on ebay anything okay and what the prices are okay i shouldn't you know i just bought a, a five foot demonstration slide rule on ebay i shouldn't talk i mean i that's going to be in my storage locker in a year because I thought, oh, that's cool. That's what the teacher had when I was in 10th grade on the wall. Yeah, that's right. But it's got no value. I don't think the software's. I hate to say it. I hate to side with your wife because she's obviously wrong. But no, I'm afraid there's no value in that software at all. I don't think I'm ever going to get rich off of anything. But, it seemed, but I was 
you know, I've seen all of this stuff progress from the time that, you know, like I started working right out of college. Oh, you know, you and I have a, a, a real nostalgic feel for this. And in fact, I'll tell you what people have been doing in your shoes. They've been sending their crap to me. <laughs> so I have a basement full of old Osborne computers and manuals, version 1.0 of Microsoft Office, of Microsoft Windows. I have an original Amiga. I have an original Commodore PET. People just send me this stuff thinking I want it. Yeah, see, I have some of those old... They can't, they can't bear to part with it because it was an important part of your life, right? But I don't think it has any value. You should check eBay. If there's any value, it'll show there at least. You could, if you really wanted to spend the energy, put it on eBay. But, you know, if you're only going to get 15 bucks for it, it might not be worth the shipping and trouble. Yeah, no, I understand your point. I mean, I do know the thing is the thing is eating up an entire storage locker. But, I mean, it's also, I don't know. I remember back in the day what how big it was, and now all of a sudden it's like people don't even I know. know what it is, you know? I know. I have a, a deck of playing cards from Microsoft, the Windows 7 playing cards they sent out when Windows 7 came out. Someday those cards, I've never opened them. <laughs> They're going to be worth at least a buck fifty. <laughs> yeah, it, it has more probably has more value to you and me as sentimental value as history as part of our history as well yeah. as part of computer history. But I, I don't you know even Beanie Babies aren't really worth anything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't see a, a early version of Lotus One Two Three being really much of a collectible. I hate to say it, but okay. go, look, eBay is your best source of information on this. Okay, I will take a look. Yeah, there, there is a market in the sense that there are people, crazy people like Alex, who have this weird penchant for buying stuff. Uh, you know, and it's, uh, you know I mean? Maybe you'll luck out. There's a site called Let It Go. Is that really true? Chat room, chat room says, put it on Let It Go. <laughs> is that where people bring their trash? Oh, and you're just talking about this, the Frozen song. Let's play Let It Go. That's You're probably right. We should just, just, just let it go. Just say goodbye to the old Lotus 123. The Microsoft Office you never even opened. Anybody got Norton antivirus? Just let mm -hmm. it go. The snow glows white on the mountain tonight. Not a footprint. To be seen. A kingdom of isolation. Goodbye, old PC. Like I'm the queen. So long, compact. The wind is howling like this. It's time storm inside. to just let it go. Couldn't keep it in. Oh, no. let it go is an app. Never mind. Forget it. Uh, let, Ron is on the line from Hayden, Colorado. We're going to go to you next, Ron. His PC crashes whenever he goes to Amazon. Anytime, just Amazon. Ron, am I? Uh, you're in Hayden, Colorado, and every time you go to Amazon, it's it crashes. Not every time. What happens is, if you go to a list that has maybe four or five items, and you click on one of the items from your list, uh, you'll have maybe one or two seconds, and then it'll crash and it freezes up. Now, what crashes? Your browser only, or the whole system? Now. The the uh, br the browser just the crashes. Yeah. The three machines. Uh, it will not crash when I use IE. It crashes when I use Chrome or Firefox. What? I've got another machine that I use Firefox on, and it doesn't crash. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I would be surprised if every machine crashed because that wouldn't be a good thing for Amazon. So there's something going on here. Obviously. I'm getting a lot of pups. Pops? Um, Pop-ups? Uh, yeah, in the malware, they went through uh, pup something or other. Ah, uh, okay, so that's what's happening. So one thing you can do, and you should try it with your browser, You in all browsers there's a way to kind of reset the browser, to clear the cache, clear the cookies, just put it back to new. Uh, it's different in each browser, but try that. That will clear out any cached gunk. Uh, if it still crashes, then you might have something on your system that's running when you get to that kind of web page. That is a clear warning sign. You know, obviously, if somebody's logging your keystrokes when you're on Amazon, that's a bad thing. 
So I would, this is one where I would get some uh, anti-malware, antivirus, scan the system, look for something, malwarebytes.org, something like that. Because uh, I, I think you've got something on your system. But the first thing is clear those browsers, reset them. Out of time, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Thanks to Nathan Staten, our musical director. Thanks to Kim Schaffer, our phone answerer. I'm Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Have a great geek week. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy Show for today. Thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, it's just the tip of the iceberg. We do nearly 30 shows on the Netcast Network. It's called TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week in Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security and Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on. And on. You even get your daily dose of tech news with Tech News Today. And of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon this week in tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great tech guy show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.